And then we have been interacting with you for quite some time now. And then from my side, I think I need to say to you up front, uh, as a committee, we are so encouraged to note that the Katlong and France Bat have finally progressed MEC from stagnant audit outcomes. You'll recall that the Katlong has been stuck in a disclaimer audit opinion for the two consecutive financial years of 2017-18 and 2018-19. Uh, they've now then progressed to a qualified audit for the year under review. While this is a great improvement, it still falls short of the accounting excellence which our communities demand and they also deserve that. I'm also happy to know that the district, which had also stagnant in, on an unqualified audit opinion with matters of emphasis in 2016, 17, 18, and 19, has finally progressed to clean audit in 2019-20. I think this is a commendable feature, considering that the majority of senior management position in the municipality are vacant. Unfortunately, Seoul Plaki municipality remains stagnant on qualified audit opinion for the last three consecutive financial year. The worrying factor is on Makarin that has regressed from qualified audit opinions in 2015-16, 2016-17, 17-18, 18-19 to a disclaimer in 2019-20. As indicated by the report from the provincial treasurer, these are the issues that we are also concerned. We are informed that the municipality had not spent any of its 2021 uh, MIG allocation as of January 2021 due to the dispute with Sandra. The municipality is therefore unlikely to utilize much of this grant come end of June. And we are worried because at the end of the day, uh, this does not bode well for the service delivery to the communities of Maharin. All parties concerned must therefore resolve the impasse between the municipality and Sunrun as a matter of agent. You will recall last time as a committee, we also interacted with the administrator of Pokwane on the 20th of August, 2020, just two months before the election of the new council in November, 2020. The administrator then assured us that the, as a committee that he was on track to move the municipality from a disclaimed zone to an unqualified audit as he has done on previous assignments. However, MEC, the administrator has not fulfilled this promise as the presentation from the provincial treasury indicates that the municipality has since regressed from a qualified audit opinion in 2017-18 and 2018-19 to a disclaimed opinion in 2019-20. Uh, the, the issue is around presenting unrealistic commitments and failing to honor them. Uh, on our part then, is not acceptable. I believe that Mr. Day is in our midst. We are going to take him task for his committee to task for his commitment that um, he made. And then we are going then to also uh, follow up with him. And then he must comment on the commitments that he, he made to us. With these few words, MEC Vas, let me welcome you with the team. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, the apology that I got thus far is for, from the district. Uh, they've been struggling to connect. And then the other issue then is the apology from our own committee member, Mr. Mabika, who's still on sick leave. The minister is unable to attend. The deputy minister as well is unable to attend. And then uh, the DG is unable to attend and then is delegated Mr. Mpumukhale to lead the delegation. The AG's office, they're not going to attend due to the MFMA deadlines. Uh, I should think 
I must welcome the delegation of Maharin local municipality led by the Mayor Katsula Nio Masse, and then also Sol, Sol Plaki, as led by our former colleague, Councillor Patrick Mavilo. And then uh, Francis Bard, we had the good challenges of connecting, they would connect. And then also welcome uh, the Hatong local as led by the mayor. The MEC have already acknowledged you with your entire management team. I see the HODEA and other senior management team. Uh, is MEC flows for so here? I didn't see that unless the MEC is using somebody's gadget. The MEC for finance was supposed to be part of us. I didn't see that. Is there anyone from provincial treasury? Uh, good day, honorable chairperson. Uh, it's the acting HOD of provincial treasury. The MEC is also still struggling to connect, but I think once okay. uh, he has, yeah. He has connected, he will give us, uh, he will give an indication to the- oh, Yeah, we'll be able to see when he's here. And then let me also welcome the Salga delegation uh, led by the East Chairperson, uh, Councillor Lula Mille. Our COO is in our midst as well, including the colleagues from the, uh, Ms. Madeline Brandt is also here the provincial uh, head of operations. So that's who we are. I'll just quickly confirm the attendance of my own committee members. Honorable to you are here and please mute your mic microphone. Can I also ask the executive mayor of Seoul Lucky to also mute his microphone? Then Honorable Direko is in our midst. Honorable Mpumsa is in our midst. Honorable Kronewald is with us in our midst. Uh, Honorable Towa using two gadgets. I see, I'm seeing you for the second time. And Honorable Pritika Banchava is in our midst. I think those are the members. Honorable Spies, I've seen you, you are here in our midst. Did I miss Honorable Brink by Uk or Kruk? I don't know. But yes, these are the colleagues that are in our midst. Uh, I think MEC, given the situation on your side, can allow, I allow you to be the first one to give the overview. I think you have arranged who's gonna do the actual provincial uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, let's do it in that way. The municipalities will deal with the metadata stage. Over to you, MEC. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and good morning, and good morning to all the members of the committee. And also let me greet um, all the members of the different municipalities, the local mayors, uh, as well as the team from Treasury, the MEC. I've spoken to the MEC, will be joining us later, Chairperson. Um, as you struggle uh, to connect. Let me also greet our team from, from Salga, the team from Coxta, as well as all, all other colleagues who are present in this meeting. Um, Honorable Chairperson, no, thanks uh, for this opportunity um, to present to the committee um, uh, today. Uh, Chair, I also want to apologize that uh, myself and the MEC of Finance also having two house sittings today. So we have to attend to the two house sittings as well. But uh, Chairperson, I think you've, you've raised a number of issues um, that we have to reflect on in terms of the, uh, the current position of our municipalities, um, the state of our municipalities, but also in terms of the audit outcomes. I think it's one of the matters that all of us are worried about and it's something that um, we really need to up our game in, in our municipalities despite the number of challenges that we are setting in municipalities. Um, one of the issues um, that is critical for us is the spending because it impact on service delivery and communities are raising a number of issues of our municipalities who are not um, responding to service delivery. 
On the other side, we have municipalities who are not uh, spending on MIC, and I think that's unacceptable. That's why, from the side of, of, of the province, we encourage our municipalities to fill the vacant positions in terms of uh, technical uh, managers in municipalities so that they'll be in a better position to spend on, 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 on MIC. But also in terms of the oversight role of, of councils, uh, councils should uh, make sure that uh, municipalities spend on MIC um, so that at least we better our infrastructure. A number of our municipalities are struggling with aging infrastructure and it's something that we have to look into and to respond to in terms of spending on, on our MIC allocation that we're getting. Um, on the other hand, um, Honorable Chairperson, um, I think the issue raised by the Auditor General in terms of um, the audit outcomes of our municipalities, uh, it's, it's something that, um, that, that concerns all of us. And um, I think in terms of the support from the side of, of COGSTA as well as Provincial tre um, Treasury, we are really trying to assist our municipalities to make sure that they better the situation in terms of our audit outcomes. Um, it's unacceptable for municipalities to regress. Some of our municipalities uh, improve, but uh, it's not clean. We want, um, all of us want to see that we have more um, um, uh, clean um, reports. Um, I think from the side of the district municipalities, the district municipalities is a, is a much more better position to make sure that the municipalities receive clean audits. But also district municipalities should, report, should uh, support the local municipalities to make sure that our municipalities um, um, perform better in terms of our audit outcomes. But we are confident, um, Honorable Chairperson, with the support from, from the province as well as um, the support um, from national, we'll be in a, in, a, in, a, in a better position. That's why we have um, um, Operation uh, Clean Audit to make sure that at least we give the necessary support uh, to our municipalities. But uh, you know, our presentation, Honorable Chairperson, will reflect on a number of issues that you raised. But uh, let me request Advocate Manyaneng to take us through the report, and then we'll take it from there. All the local municipalities, I think, all five of them in France of Bar, they are online. So if there's critical issues, maybe some of the mayors can respond to the issues as well. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you so much, uh, Missy. Can I hand over to the officials as delegated? Honorable MCs and Honorable Mayors, may I proceed, Chair? Just load your presentation on the screen first. Chair, we have sent it through to the Secretariat. Um, are they able to load it from the side? We were not given sharing rights. Mm -hmm. Were you not given sharing rights? But no, I can ask them. Uh, Amanda, are you the one who's flight who's who should fly the presentation? Do that. Jury one. But they do have uh, jury one. Jury one, go and dress properly. You are home. Ne? This is a committee meeting. Please. <laughs> Go and dress properly. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> Good morning, Chair. Um, Go and dress properly. Oh, yeah. Can you uh, please I'm sure go? You Can you go and dress properly, please? <laughs> oh, go it's and fine, dress. Uh, you are at home, I suppose. Yeah, Chair. Sorry. Go and change. Switch off that video of yours. Switch it off. The video. The video. Uh, at least it's going to change. So proceed. <laughs> My apologies for that. Can the presenter proceed? Thank yes. The presentation is on the screen. Is Morning, the, can you hear me now? You, can yes. you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thanks, now sir. we can hear you. 
right. My apologies, we were muted in the process. Okay. Um, this is the outline of the presentation. You can move on to the next slide. Um, and the next one, yes. So we, we have started the presentation on the functionality, a broad overview of the functionality of the municipalities within the Transbar district. Um, as we indicate that all of them are functional and you recall, and as you opened the meeting, you indicated the situation in Papuani. It was placed under administration and it was subsequently dissolved uh, by, by elections have now been held and we now have a new municipal council um, which has been declared elected. So we must also indicate that um, contrary to the views that once a municipal council gets elected, the intervention must cease. We, we did not do that um, because had we done that, the municipality would not have had anybody in its uh, midst to assist the municipal council with anything uh, because there were no senior managers at the municipality at the point of the, by the 16th of November when the municipal council took office. So as we speak, the administrator is still at the municipality and we are in the process of finalizing the triggers that um, necessitated the intervention. Next slide. Um, with respect to the appointments of senior managers at the provincial level, this is how we look like. And we indicate that out of the 145 positions, um, Francis Bart is making headway out of his um, 26 um, positions that are, that are there. Um, they've got a bit, um, 33% which is vacant um, in the province with Francis Bart only having 11 that are vacant. And the, out of the 15 positions that have been filled. Um, Francis Bart have got um, 10 women um, in, the, in the whole scheme of um, the 25 women in the whole province that have been um, appointed in senior management positions. Chair, so we have progressed substantially in France in Papuan. Um, we have not been able to push the new council to advertise all vacant positions of senior managers. The closing date was last week Friday. And we must indicate that as effective from yesterday, we have now seconded a senior manager from Francis Bath District Municipality to be appointed as an acting municipal manager. Um, she's going to be there until the end of December. She will run through the process until the close of the financial year. And she will also be responsible to take over from the administrator with respect to all the other responsibilities that are required to be performed. And she will also be responsible to ensure that um, she becomes part of the transitional management team that is running through to what's the local government elections. Um, currently there's two MM positions that are vacant in the, in the, in the district, three technical services and two planners and two community services. Um, we have, we thought we should highlight the vacant um, positions with the um, orange, with the yellow color, so that at least when decisions is made in this committee, these parties should ensure that they, they, they fill those positions with um, um, as soon as possible. Next slide. Chair, we thought we should also give a, 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 a picture of the disciplinary cases and suspensions. Um, in the province, but for specific reference to Pokwane, we look at the Khatron of Black in Pokwane. Um, next slide. And we also, in anticipation of the local government elections, we are assisting municipalities by informing them um, through this process to say, to, to, to alert them on the termination of the, the of their senior managers and we will be advising them to um, advertise positions way in advance, such that, for example, when the 31st of December comes, the municipality should not only then be thinking of advertising the positions of the vacant, of the municipal manager of South Lake, um, and, the, and the rest of the, of the vacant positions. So we'll ensure that um, those errors is covered. If you look at the stability that the then, um, um, can you go back quickly? Okay, if you look at the, um, the stability that has been um, 
proposed in the, um, the, the, the unconstitutionally invalid declared um, systems act. Um, the Catalan has been a step ahead of all of the municipalities in France, but by appointing their senior managers on a permanent basis. And we certainly urge municipalities to do that because it gives us comfort that once the municipal managers leave, there is a cushion of stability at the level of senior managers. Next slide. Chair, with respect to the areas that we've covered on top, we, in accordance with the request, we provided an indication of what support we provided to the municipalities with respect to the recruitment, um, the regulations with regard to non-compliance, um, vacancies, and implementation of the timeframes with regard to appointments. And we've also assisted them with the finalization of the prototype establishment, staff establishment, performance management and remunerations versus the waiver provision. Next slide. Uh, part of the issues that the chair has raised at the beginning of the of the meeting is the poor performance of municipalities with respect to the implementation of the migrants. As a province, we became concerned about that as well as what the MEC has raised. We became concerned about it, and we, to that extent, um, established. Um, enhanced our support on the, through the APP and the annual operational plan and to beefed up our capacity through the, the MOU agreement that we have for the DBS in South Africa. We consequently... Sorry, I think where you are... Are you in the boardroom? Yes, it's not a I'm in the bathroom chair. Who, who's Venom Potakitel? He's not one of us. Is it? Oh. Do you know somebody called Venom Potakitel? No, chair. You don't. I don't. You don't? Stephen so. Demisi doesn't know Venom Potakitel. When they actually doesn't. <laughs> 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 then let me ask. Well, I'm to get there to mute his or microphone. Good, good morning, ma'am. I'm sorry I joined late. Who, uh, I'm who's the impact chairperson for Makareng Municipality. For Makareng? Yes. And then when you join the meeting late, you just disrupt. Can you mute your gadget? I will. Cancel the get there. Mute your gadget, ne? please. I'm waiting for you to mute. You are not muting. Thank you. You can proceed. Thanks, Chair. Sorry about that. Eh? No, it's accepted. Um, we consequently appoint, um, DPC appointed V3 Consulting Engineering Company to assist the department through support and consulting um, the municipalities to improve their service delivery and infrastructure development. If we, if we look at the bottom of the slide, chat, we look at the areas under which we will be assisting the municipalities on, and the merit of um, support that we'll be providing to municipalities. Next slide. Um, the PMU chair has got a group or multidisciplinary specialist team of professionals who are assisting, and they've, they've made themselves um, available to the department and to all municipalities in the province um, to assist them on um, a number of things, as you can see in the slide, civil and, and, and infrastructure engineering services, electrical engineers, town planners, um, special developers, and a whole range of um, senior managers in there, amongst which chair are the municipal finance and asset um, care experts and um, technical advisory experts. So if you look at it, the PMU will capacitate and support um, the management of municipalities with those areas that we'll be specializing on, and we'll be providing them with the necessary um, capacity where they make that capacity to ensure that us as a department, we execute our um, constitutional mandate. Next slide. So the next slide chair indicates to you the high, at the high level, the scope with, of areas of responsibility of this class. Um, Part of these streams will, will show you in the slide, in the presentation on how they have been um, 
implemented in different municipalities um, across the province, where they, uh, particularly in France as well. Um, next slide, please. Now, if you look at the our week expenditure chair up until uh, December 2020 and um, continuing of the end of January 2021, this is our posture and we percentage of allocation is at 1.48%. Um, but from the transfer funds, we've already spent 50.59% when we're expected to spend about 40% by the end of December. So the large expenditure that is requirement of expenditure that is required, we'll see it at the end of um, the fourth quarter. Um, we'll then report against that um, when, when the time arrives. Um, the next slide just shows you the month-to-month -month expenditure per municipality. And if you look at the Hatong over the period from October until December, um, the Hatong expenditure was at 1%. Um, but by the end of December, chair, they've just quickly jacked up the uh, expenditure to 4.61%. And if you look at uh, Pakwane, they were at that straight 32%, but they are now at 32.29% um, with some little um, reporting that, they have, that has happened. If you move on to the next slide, we are not able to report for the quarter because it is not yet finished, but we thought it is important to give a glimpse of how the expenditure looks like um, um, at the end of January. Um, we already see here that um, the Khatlong has now moved to 9% and Pokwane at um, 53%. Now, Chair, as you correctly indicated, and the MC also did, we have had challenges with respect to the agreement that we need to have from Sandra. And we will also raise this with the district development um, champion um, so that we're able to find um, uh, um, structures that will assist us to to unlock this um, statement. The crux of the issue, what can I just go back? The crux of the issue with Sandal is everything else with respect to the laying of the pipes, the water pipes that must take water from the water treatment plant through to the communities has been done. The only part is Sandal is refusing to have the municipality to, to put up um, a pipeline on top of a bridge or even to attach it underneath the bridge um, to get it through across the river and to get it underneath the M12. Um, so they're refusing without providing us any justifiable constitutional reasons, safe to say that um, they are, they, it is their responsibility to maintain bridges and roads. So they do not want to get into the issues of um, the maintenance of pipelines. We don't require them to maintain the pipelines, we will do them as and when the pipelines have been attached to, through to the bridge. But we must report that engagements are at an advanced stage and we, in the event this does not get resolved uh, by the end of this month, we'll certainly come back and report it to the political structures for them to keep us So with respect to ESCOM, that in the next slide. We wanted to give the chair a picture of um, how the picture looks like for Pokwane and Soplaiki. Um, in Pokwane, as indicated, um, there is an agreement that has been um, that has been entered into between um, as, um, ESCOM and Pokwane, but there are still discussions about the contents of the agreement. Um, so, should there be any issues that crop up? We should be in a position to assess to our in engagement with ESCOM in this regard. We've started with them with respect to the issue that Pokwana has raised on the um, Nkanda issue. So with respect to the debt, we'll also be discussing that with them in detail. Just so Plaki has had challenges with um, payment of the ESCOM debt. Um, the provincial task team um, that was led by the Premier and the MECs of Finance and Coxter has been in with the technical teams have been in the space to have an engagement with the senior management of ESCOM to find an amicable solution with respect to the settlement of the payment arrangements. Next slide. And then the Hatlong chair, the, there has not been any um, repayment plan. Um, and you can see that the sheriff has listed assets 
we're in discussions with um, ESCOM in this regard to ensure that they do not escalate the issue to actual attachments and removal of the assets from the municipality. Um, and we will ensure through the interministerial task team um, of that, we'll ensure that that doesn't happen. With respect to Maharing, you can see Chair Maharing is, um, is standing out um, from the rest. There are no legal disputes in this, in this regard. Um, they've made their payment of 1 million to ESCO. There's an interim payment agreement in place. Um, it will be, it was going to be revised by the end of December. Um, and it's all systems go with, with respect to Maharing. With respect to the support as I indicated earlier, um, you recall that we indicated that V3 is being brought on board to assist municipalities. And in this regard, they are able to assist or flag you with the revenue enhancement um, program. And you can see from the side of the progress, um, they have already started the, um, the process of supporting Soplaki with the development of the uh, revenue enhancement program. Um, and over and above that, there are other issues that they are also assisting Soplaki municipalities with, which we will certainly report to this committee on. Um, Okwane, Maharing, they're also assisting them with respect to their water services master plan, the water services development plan and management plan to reduce non-revenue um, non -revenue matter. But over and above the PMU, um, I must indicate that MISA is also playing a critical role in assisting Maharing. They are our lead engineers. Can I just go back? They are our lead engineers um, who are assisting municipality with respect to the central issue and any other um, um, infrastructure issue in Mahari. So in Fakwani Chair, the support that V3 has also provided is provided here in the slide with respect to it being prepared, preparing the screen report for, for this area on management plan and the reduction of land revenue. Next slide. Then Chair, if you look at the first of our presentation, um, this is now the end of the infrastructure development presentation that we've done. Um, this is the support that we've provided to the municipality with respect to their challenges. Um, we've reprioritized projects where it was necessary. Um, the evaluation of the projects against MIG conditions. We've held meetings with municipal officials and consultants to discuss projects. Um, we also assisted them with the capture of the information of the MIS system. Um, mutual, virtual meetings have also been done to do evaluation and appraisals of um, some of the proposed projects. Um, and this is the support that we have provided through to municipalities chain. Next slide. Now with respect to planning and disaster management, we have in, we have, um, in preparation for the close of the financial year, we have ensured that all municipalities submit their IDPs by process plans by the 1st of August. And they have, we have provided them with uh, monitoring and support of the IDP review process, which is currently underway. Um, they're supposed to finish them by the 31st of March and will ensure that all sector departments interact with municipalities in this um, regard. The, we must indicate that uh, the France Bart DTM forum is now functional. We are only left with the, with the launch of the DTM forum. Um, we're hoping that with authorization from the presidency, it will take place um, during, the, the, during this month or early April. And we are taking, we're playing a very significant um, role and part in this process by providing secretarial support to the DDM function. We're bringing on board Francis Bar District Municipality to take over the secretarial part chair and we will support them through the process. Chairperson would probably re um, recall that quite recently, December and January, we had um, recent floods and storms that have taken place in the province. Um, amongst other districts that have been uh, much affected is Francis Bar and we have supported them um, through work for the Soplaki, Maharin, and Pokwa municipalities. And we have ensured that the emergency housing grant has been applied for, for the houses that have been damaged. Um, 
the performance management system um, and policy frameworks that have been developed, Chair, we are able to report in the next slide that the framework has been approved in all four municipalities in the province. And we are also indicating that um, the, the, the municipalities implementing the performance management system at senior management level, most of them um, are doing it without the proper framework in place. But with respect to the completion of performance management system for the 2020 and 2021 financial year, we can indicate that in this regard, um, the next slide, please. Next one. Yes, um, we can indicate that with respect to performance agreements, Tihatong and so Plaki, amongst others, have been able to complete the performance management agreement. And we, this quality they have not submitted, but they are currently being engaged, um, is um, Tihatong as well. And we're also indicating that um, some municipalities have been reminded um, for the tabling of the annual report and oversight report, um, as well as the um, submission of this report to the provincial legislature by the 7th of June 2021. This is the nature of support that we have provided to this municipality. So with respect to valuation goals in the next slide, we indicate that the um, majority of the municipalities have been notified of the validity date of the uh, areas, but to, for specific reference to the district, we lift so Plaki and Tihatlon, which whose valuation role will come to an end in the next two years. Um, the valuation role that are also valid for until the next, uh, the third outer year will be Maharang and Pakwani in this process. Next slide, apologies. Um, so the promulgation of um, level of rates is a requirement for municipality to to before they can levy any property rates from any resident. We have been able to monitor those who have complied with the submission within 60 days of adoption of the, um, of the, of the resolution. And we have been able to indicate that um, there are those that are fully complied by 2021 and so plenty of force amongst those out of this district. Um, for those that are published after the due date, um, we still accept um, the, the, uh, the resolutions in the Gazette. This is Maharang and Papuane. Um, the Khatlong has not yet complied, but support has been provided with the pro forma copies of, of the Gazette um, that has been lifted from the other areas and to ensure that they are also complying in this regard. Next slide. So we've provided this slide as a picture of the general challenges and support that has been provided to municipalities with respect to um, performance management, um, performance management, and the performance agreement, valuation roles, and all the other areas. And we have indicated that, by and large, in this area, the support that we've provided is to remind municipalities um, to ensure that they comply with the prescribed timelines. Term, and those are the list of challenges that we're providing to municipalities that, that we observe from municipalities. With CWP participation chair um, in the Francis Bart area, we are able to provide the committee with the recruitment process and the uh, participation. Um, you will see that if we might, if we reported, if chair could remember, when we reported in October last year, um, the numbers were not so low. Um, the only reason is in the process, um, Copta National said to us, um, some of the participants had to be removed from the list of participants because they could not verify their details with respect to the ID and addresses um, and what areas where they lived. So once those, um, we could not do that, we then removed from the system. And as and when they verify the uh, details and particulars, we could then be brought back onto the system to ensure that the system does not have post with us. Uh, we are now at the point of the 
captured platform. So captured platform is a um, is a gadget platform that is used by National Copter to identify service delivery related concerns from communities. And we initially started with four municipalities in the province. We have now included Mahareng as one of the municipalities in this region. And we will ensure that in the process, we will be able to lift some of the service real-time service delivery challenges that um, are occurring from municipalities and we'll report, we'll report about them in the next engagement. It's unfortunate that the system is not able to identify um, those five um, service delivery issues with respect to the municipalities where they, where they crop up, where they emerge. But I think with the continuous development of the system, we should be in a position to come to this committee and indicate and attribute the percentage of the um, top five service delivery issues to specific municipalities. That is our presentation. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Can we then allow provincial treasurer to do the same? Or is it a consolidated report? Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Uh, Treasury will also be doing a presentation. Okay. You can proceed. The MEC has not yet joined me. Yes, the MEC still indicated that he was uh, having serious challenges with the uh, with connection because I think maybe just to indicate that in Kimberley we are having load shedding most probably now at 10, the lights will be on. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, uh, this is just basically the table of contents. Uh, we'll be just going through the legislative requirements. Uh, the overview for municipality compliance status by the municipalities, the risk and non-compliance, as well as the challenges and the recommendations. Uh, Chairperson, I think uh, the purpose of today's meeting is basically to brief the committee about the MFMA compliance matters, uh, especially with regards to, and also the support that Treasury has provided to the five uh, the five municipalities within the district of Francis Bart. And then in terms of the legislative requirements, um, the constitution is basically the piece of legislation that we are deriving our mandate from and the MFMA, as well as uh, the regulations and other circulars that are coming from National Treasury, as well as from any other sea of government that's got an impact on the finances of municipalities. Then with regards to Pukwani municipality, uh, we have actually just looked at some of the pillars relating to the back to basics. And this is just basically the summary of how we have assessed the municipality to be. And in terms of the financial health, when we really look at the number of uh, issues, especially the audit outcomes, the credibility of the budget, uh, the revenue, uh, as well as the extent to which the debt of the municipality is being serviced, as well as the efficiency of SEM, we can uh, conclude that the municipality falls under a distressed municipality. And then in terms of the institutional uh, related issues, um, this one basically relates to the appointment of the top structures. Um, also just indicating, you know, the issue pertaining to the institutional memory. So we have um, concluded that the municipal, uh, when it comes to the institutional uh, pillar, is distressed and then in terms of service delivery and as well and governance is also distressed. So when we really go into the nitty gritties, I will not necessarily touch on the points that have been already presented by my colleague from Coxta. I think the first four bullets indicates uh, what has already been uh, highlighted by Mr. Manyani uh, in terms of the, 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 the current position of the council at, 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 at Pukwani. And only maybe just to give an indication that from the observations that we have made is that, that there are currently no performance agreements. And uh, also maybe what is of uh, interest to the committee will also be the indication that Pukwani is actually intending to change its financial system, which may result in some complications as well for the municipality. And furthermore, we 
are also indicating to the committee that um, Gokwan is also raised, uh, faced with a number of litigations which may basically uh, affect the municipality uh, negatively. When you look at the governance and finances, um, the what is of concern is that um, municipalities are expected to have a collection rate of above 95%, but unfortunately, what we have noted is that the collection rate of Pokwani has deteriorated from 48% to 32%, and this is basically attributed to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, also, the net data space is above 100 uh, days, which is, a, which is way above the norm because the debtors are supposed to pay the municipalities with, within 30 days, but they are not doing that. So it means that um, the rate at which the cash is coming into the municipality is quite low. Um, and also the municipality has reported a cost coverage ratio of below the norm of one to three months. Which, which means that it's, it does, uh, the municipality does not necessarily have sufficient cash to cover its um, operational costs at any given point in time. And also furthermore, the municipality has been unable to spend its conditional grant, which is also a concern. And then the creditors management of all services has slightly improved and that we can also attribute it to the support that has been provided by uh, provincial treasury as well as um, Coxter when it comes to payment plans and addressing the creditors. And then in terms of the service delivery, we've also noted that there's a lack of skill in the technical department, hence some of the management tools that are available have not been adequately utilized. The next slide basically just gives an indication of how the municipality has fared in terms of submission of information. Uh, in terms of the reports relating to the tabling of the budget. Um, in 2020-21, we are actually seeing a, we are seeing an improvement uh, whereby in the past, the, there has been late submissions. And then in terms of the adopted budget uh, being adopted, the most unfortunate part is that in most instances, the municipality has been tabling an unfunded budget, which is a major concern. Uh, most of the INEA reports have been received late. And I've already alluded to the fact that when one looks at the revenue management, uh, all the three indicators are showing red because uh, the municipality is non-compliant. The collection rate is way below 95%. The cash uh, cost coverage is also way below. And then the net data space is also way above what is expected. And then uh, the creditors, like we have said, as, as much as there's a slight improvement, we are still having a challenge because if the municipality does not have sufficient cash, it will become difficult to really honor its commitments, especially when it comes to repaying the creditors. Um, and then in terms of the grant management, we've also said that uh, the municipality is unable to really spend all of its grant funding, which is a major concern for us as a provincial treasury. Then in terms of the submission of financial statements, uh, the, uh, the financial statements have been submitted late, and I think this was one of Only me was missing the speaker. Colleagues? Colleagues? Me, Chair. Oh, I here. can't hear even myself, Chair. Yes, MEC. You know, it's Advocate Manyaneng from Cox we, we suspect it's load shedding on their side because it, it, okay. it runs through different areas. Mm. Uh, Chair, Chair Nelson, can you hear me now? Uh, we, yeah, you are back. It just fine. came back. Yes, our electricity just that. came back. Yes. Sorry about that. You went mute. We couldn't hear you. Okay, no, that's fine. Uh, I will increase my volume. Uh, in terms of the audit and the submission of annual financial statements, um, the municipality has not been submitting financial statements on time. Uh, there is actually a backlog because the Auditor General is currently busy finalizing the 1819 um, audit for the municipality. So the 1920 remains outstanding. So as a result, uh, you, we don't have um, the financial statements for 1920. 
neither do we have the audit outcomes as well as the audit action plan for the 1920. Uh, we are also concerned because the municipality has not necessarily been compiling the audit action plans. Then in terms of compliance relating to uh, the unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful uh, that we are abbreviating as UIF and W, uh, there was an increase from 2017-18 uh, of about 190. She has disappeared again. Can you hear with only me? Me too, I can't hear. Uh, when okay. uh, like I had indicated, um, identified as a, as the municipal part of the top 10 uh, NW. The full council was recently elected. Um, the only challenge that we are basically experiencing as provincial treasury is that um, we have not been in a position to receive some of the information required because of the challenges that the municipality is experiencing with the financial system that they are having. So uh, in terms of submission, uh, we only have greens in September as well as in December, but throughout the, from June, July, 2020, we have been struggling to receive the information. Um, Then in terms of compliance with the regulations of minimum competency, uh, the municipality does have an accounting officer and uh, the CFO, as well as the senior, uh, senior managers. They do, uh, we, we cannot necessarily um, verify as to whether indeed uh, they do meet the minimum competency because we have not received the necessary documentation for validation thereof. And then middle managers, that is fine. Uh, except for, yeah, and then the SEM head, we also have not necessarily received any supporting documentation pertaining to the, them meeting the minimum standards. Uh, the work that has been done by provincial treasury is that we have focused on six uh, areas, which is budget management, revenue and expenditure management, grant management, uh, SEM support, as well as consequence management and capacity building and um, audit outcomes. So what we have done for the said municipalities is that we assisted them with the development of the financial recovery plan. Uh, we have provided them with training. Um, we have also given them, uh, assisted them with the billing uh, data integrity um, model and also with, uh, with, with trying to resolve the, the government debt. So tre provincial treasury has been intervening especially where the departments are owing um, the municipality. We have also assisted with the financial planning, uh, focusing on the creditors management, um, looking at the cost containment policy and the regulations. And we've also provided some guidance on various reconciliations. Furthermore, with the grants, what we have done is that we did some pre-assessment sessions uh, where all stakeholders uh, were involved. SEM, we have provided training, we have done some evaluation on contract management, we have reviewed and aligned the municipal asset policies together with the um, SOPs, and we've also provided guidance to the municipality, um, and as well as assistance in terms of finalization of the UAF. F and W reduction policy. And then in terms of consequence management, uh, what we did is that we have raised awareness and we've done some, we've conducted some workshop and we've also tried to assist the municipality through the verification of the portfolio of evidence for minimum competencies and provided the municipality with feedback. And then audit outcomes, I think what we have done is that we have been providing all the necessary support uh, as required by the municipality when it comes to uh, the audit outcomes. And then with Mahareng, this is just a snapshot of, um, of uh, the observation by Treasury in terms of the financial health. Um, 
the municipality is quite distressed. Uh, uh, the institutional, there is some level of comfort to say that it's, it's, it's starting to get to a point where things are normalizing and service delivery still remains a challenge as well as governance. Uh, what we have reflected here in terms of the institutional arrangement is that the post of the technical director in community services remains vacant, which is a serious concern. It has already been highlighted. And um, though we wanted to complete a financial recovery plan, it has not necessarily been implemented uh, by the municipality. Uh, MSCOA, it's also one of the issues that um, needs urgent attention. And uh, also the performance agreements have been signed and linked to the SDBIP, which is actually a step in the right direction. And then in terms of the municipal, in terms of the financial governance, uh, the collection rate has also deteriorated at the municipality, which is a serious concern. And furthermore, the municipality is more grant dependent and it's using its capital grant to fund its operation, which is a serious concern. And the cost uh, coverage ratio has remained below the norm of one month to three months. And this has been the case for the past three years. So the liquidity of the municipality is, um, is at risk uh, based on the indicators that we are highlighting. And the net data has in increased year on year showing the net data, net data days of over, of over 100 days. Um, this is just a representation in terms of the compliance by the municipality. And in terms of tabling, the municipality has been compliant for a, a number of years. Uh, the only challenge has remained with the approval of the annual budget, uh, which was always late. And the municipality has been adopting an unfunded budget, uh, which then means that the budget that is being presented is not a credible uh, report. Or budget. And then in terms of the in-year uh, reports, uh, the reports have been submitted late. Uh, the revenue management and the creditors management I've already alluded to, that, that basically shows that the municipality is facing a liquidity uh, problem. Grant management is also a serious concern because the municipality has not been compliant as most of the grants have remained unspent. And then in terms of the submission status, I think the municipality was doing well in terms of submitting their annual financial statements in 17 and 18, as well as 18 and 19 financial years. The financial state statements were submitted on time. It's only in the 1920 where they were submitted late and the audit outcomes for the 17, 18 and 18, 19, it was, uh, it was a negative, uh, it was a, a qualification. The municipality did provide the audit action plans. Uh, as it is now, we are still awaiting the report from the Auditor General in terms of the final outcome of the municipality for the 1920 financial year. And then with regards to the UIF and W, uh, there was an increase uh, or a decline rather in the UIF and W. The only unfortunate part is that we do not necessarily have uh, supporting documentation or reports from the municipality uh, that would give us an indication as to whether any consequences followed when the municipality was writing off some of the YFNW. Uh, this, the, the, the table below is just an indication of how the municipality, um, how the municipality fared in terms of uh, reporting on the UIF and W. Uh, one would see that from July 2020 up until September 2020, uh, there was reports provided and um, there was an indication of what is it that was happening at the municipality. And then in terms of irregular expenditure, we still remain to have a serious challenge in terms of the report, uh, municipalities reporting. Uh, this is just an indication of the com compliance with the regulations, the minimum competency regulations. Um, we are saying that uh, in terms of all the six, um, it's only the senior managers on section 56 that was not necessarily compliant, but most of them have been relatively compliant. 
And then in terms of the finance and SCM um, unit standards, uh, we have not necessarily um, verified whether the officials are in possession of those unit standards. And then in terms of the support that we have provided, um, we have provided guidance where necessary. We have also assisted with the billing data integrity testing project, uh, as well as intervening with government debt. Um, furthermore, we have also conducted a pre-assessment session involving all stakeholders on the rollovers, especially when it has to deal with grant management. SDM, uh, we have done almost the very same things that we did with, uh, with, with Pukwani, uh, as these are some of the municipalities that we have prioritized. And then in terms of consequences, we have also pro provided the training that was necessary. Uh, and then with risk management as well, we are assisting Maharin with the review of the risk register and also checking compliance with the risk management documents. And we are also in the process of capacitating the municipal officials uh, with regards to um, risk management uh, processes. And then in terms of the audit outcomes, we have, we, we, we have issued guidance and also assisted the municipality with all the queries that they may be having. We've also provided the necessary, necessary training, uh, which was held by the accounting standard boards uh, together with SIGFARO. This is just a snapshot, like we have said, is distressed in terms of its financial health. Uh, institutional, it's also distressed, and service delivery, it's also distressed, and governance, it's also uh, distressed. Um, what, is of concern, what is of concern to us is that uh, the municipality has a very high vacancy rate, and it has already been alluded to by my colleague from Coxta. And with the CFO post being vacant for a very long time, it becomes a serious challenge for us uh, because the CFO is still on special leave. And the municipality is currently trying to fill all the critical posts. And um, there was also a challenge with regards to the implementation of the financial recovery plan because it was not uh, overseen. And there's also a very high reliance on consultants. And because I, I think that can be attributed to the fact that there is a high vacancy rate. Um, in terms of the collection rate, um, uh, it's only now at 20%, which is quite, quite low. Uh, the creditors here, uh, are not uh, managed effectively um, and the municipality does not have approved uh, repayment agreements, especially when it comes to bulk creditors. And then the municipal budget is unfunded and the municipality does not have a budget and creditors repayment plan. What is also of concern is that uh, MSCOA has not been 100% implemented because there is a partial compliance and the municipality has received a disclaimer for the past two years, but there is an indication now that there is uh, an improvement because the municipality have moved from a disclaimer to a qualification, which is actually very good. Uh, the challenge, the service delivery, there's a challenge with the aging infrastructure because once the infrastructure is aging, it would mean that there will be an increase in the number of service delivery protests because of um, lack of services being offered because there would be um, a number of uh, breakdowns from time to time uh, from, from the infrastructure that is quite aging. And then what is also a concern is uh, the water distribution. Uh, it has losses, it has increased from 14% to 18%, which basically shows also um, a warning with regards to the aging infrastructure. And then the electricity losses have also increased from 29% to 36% for the same year. So the municipality is losing um, money from the losses that are being incurred in respect of water and electricity. This is basically just the a table uh, format of what I have already alluded to. Uh, the only green that we are seeing here is that the municipality has made, managed to table the uh, to, 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 to table the budget on time. And um, also what is of concern is the credibility of the budget that has been adopted by the municipality. Uh, 
and also the non-submission or the late submission of information to provincial treasury, especially your section 71 as well as section 72 reports. And then in terms of the, the, the audit, um, like we have said, the submission of financial statement to us on time, the municipality moved from um, a disclaimer to a qualified audit opinion. And uh, the audit action plans are not necessarily due as yet, but we are hoping to see the, to assist the municipality with the compilation of the audit action plan to ensure that they can improve their audit um, outcome from qualification to an unqualified audit. And then in terms of the UIFNW, um, we can actually see that there was a slight decline of UIF when compared to 2018 and 19, from 572 to 451. Um, MPEG investigation was done to recommend the writing of, of subsequent um, to write off um, 21 million of UIFNW, but to date we have not necessarily received reports as provincial treasury uh, relating to that, as well as which uh, whether there were any consequences that um, that 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 came with the reduction of the UIF. And then in terms of the UIFNW, um, we are also seeing that. With irregular expenditure, there is some work and some reports that have been provided. And one of the biggest reason for the irregular is the non-compliance with SEM related, um, related prescripts. And then with regards to the minimum competency levels, um, we, in terms of the highest qualification for all the six, um, that's only the senior manager section 57, which is still uh, non-compliant. And then with regards to the relevant experience, the municipality is fine. And then uh, with regards to the finance and SEM unit standards, we have still to verify that information and the performance agreements have been entered into by the have been entered into with the incumbents. Uh, these are just some of the support that were given by provincial treasury, uh, which is not necessarily different from what has been provided uh, to the other two municipalities that I've already spoken to. Um, and then with SEM, I think what we have done is that we have assisted the municipality with the appointment and training of the head of the SEM unit. So we are also trying to contribute in terms of capacity building, especially in SEM, like we have indicated that there's a serious uh, challenge with complying to the SEM prescripts. And then we have also provided training to the disciplinary boards and also verified portfolio of evidence for minimum competencies and provided feedback where necessary. Uh, what we should also note, uh, committee members, is that um, the risk management committees are there, but they are not functional. And the risk registers were not necessarily uh, constant or uh, uh, reviewed on time. And then in terms of the audit outcome, um, we had also training. We assisted with the review of the draft AFSs and provided inputs for management prior to the submission. Uh, we, we also assisted or reviewed with the development of internal control frameworks and provided technical support during the, the, the audit uh, by forming part of the municipal steering committee meetings. So the national competency, but for the purposes of this, we have already, we've also tried to, 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 to uh, ensure that we report accordingly. Uh, in terms of financial health, uh, the financial health of the municipality is in the decline, and it has been already alluded to by my colleague from COXTA um, in terms of Salt Lake being unable to even pay the ESCOM debt. Uh, institutional is fragile because there is instability at the top. Uh, service delivery is on the decline, and in terms of governance, we have rated it as uh, being in distress. Um, the collection rate of the municipality is only 70%, uh, which is way below the 95% norm. Uh, the net uh, data days, uh, 
year on year uh, shows also a decline as the municipality is struggling to collect long outstanding debts. Um, and further indicate, it's indicated that the debt coverage is over 90 days. So in essence, what it means is that it's taking longer for the municipality to collect its monies that are due to them. And then in terms of the cost coverage, um, what has happened is that it's below the norm of one to three months, which means that the municipality does not have sufficient money to allow them to cover their costs over a period of longer than three months. And then the creditors days have also regressed to 115. Ordinarily, the creditors should be paid within 30 days, but now the, 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 the creditors payment rate is now um, increased to 115 days. And we have also noted that there's low spending on conditional grants. Um, and the other thing is that with conditional grants, when there's a saving, they are not necessarily cash back. And the water and electricity losses remains to be very high. Uh, the water losses that have been reported for supply key, it's at 60%, which is way above the norm. And then the electricity losses are at about 18%. That is also way above the norm. And we have indicated that there is already a poor cash coverage. And it would lead the municipality to start relying on grants for its operations. And then in terms of compliance, uh, the municipality is 100% compliant with when it comes to budget management, uh, in terms of submitting its INEM uh, reports. The only challenge is what I have already, um, I have already alluded to, whereby the, the, the municipality does not have, have sufficient funding which now hampers on the liquidity of the municipality. And then the, the use of the grants is also a challenge because most of the grants have not been 100% utilized. And then in terms of the audit outcomes, um, the municipality is submitting its financial statements on time. They have met the time frames for the past three years. Uh, the audit outcomes have remained stagnant as indicated by the chairperson and uh, audit action plans have been compiled by the municipality. Uh, like we have indicated because of the 1920 um, submission and audit period having been extended, uh, some of the processes have not necessarily been finalized and the audit action plans have not become due as yet for this municipality. This is basically just the support that um, the National Treasury has provided to the municipality. They have indicated uh, that um, they have provided audit support uh, during the audit of the municipality, uh, which is now National Treasury. Um, they've also assisted with ensuring that the municipality has a funded budget and also verified portfolio of evidence in terms of the minimum competencies and feedback was also sent through. Then the last municipality, which will be now the Francis Bar District Municipality, um, the picture that is being portrayed uh, now is that Francis Bar is doing fairly well. And I think with the financial health institution as well as service delivery and governance in sound, it then speaks to the fact that um, why the municipality is also getting uh, a good audit outcome because more, all of these pillars are, are found to be sound. Then in terms of the vacancy rate, it has already been uh, alluded to, to say that three out of the six senior managers are in acting positions and the positions have not been filled for quite some time. And then um, with the MSCOA, there is some progress made by the municipality and the municipality is also given an indication that they, they may want to change the, 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 the system. And they have also reduced the, their use of consultants, which is quite good. And then in terms of the financial governance, they have realized a surplus. Um, the municipality has reserves and most of the capital projects were 100% spent. Um, there is a very good um, cash cost coverage and the investment account of the municipality are also positive. 
and the municipal budget remains to be funded and the municipality is also paying its creditors within 30 days. So this is just a reflection that in terms of finances, the municipality is doing very well. The municipality also assists the four locals with the repairs and maintenance. And the municipality has reported, I think, under expenditure in infrastructure projects, because most of them, it was because of COVID-19, as most of the projects had to be had to be kept on hold and as a result, not everything was spent in that financial year. This is just reflective of what I have said. Everything is green here, meaning that the municipality is complying with the exception of um, the 100% spending on their grant uh, funding. Um, Chairperson, I just had to change this because I think in the previous uh, presentation that we had sent to the committee, we had not yet updated the audit outcome of the municipality because it had remained um, it had remained uh, not yet finalized, but now we had confirmed that the municipality has received a clean audit, which is uh, quite an achievement from being stagnant for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, now, we, I think everything is green. The municipality has been doing fairly well. So congratulations are in order in terms of obtaining a clean audit for the 1920 financial year. And then in terms of unauthorized expenditure, the municipality has not incurred any unauthorized expenditure. Uh, the municipality has written off irregular expenditure to the total tune of about 3.5 million in the 2019. Uh, the MPEC and the disciplinary board of the municipality are functional. However, we do not necessarily have the reports uh, with regards to the consequence management implemented. Um, but what we can actually see is that the there, there might be some consequences because the municipality is, is dealing decisively with all the unwanted expenditure. And then in terms of the reports on a monthly basis, uh, the municipality is doing fairly well. It's only the monthly uh, the, the report of December that has remained outstanding. This is in terms of the minimum competency uh, regulations. I think the accounting officer meets all the minimum competency regulations. The challenge here remains with the senior managers that are quite that are acting. And that is why you would see that um, they have not uh, the, the, the current acting CFO, uh, we have not yet verified as to whether they have attained the finance and SCM uh, unit standard, as well as uh, the middle managers and SCM, which are also I think in acting position. And then in terms of the training and support provided by Treasury, we have conducted MSCOA and Section 71 training, the assessment of the special adjustment budget and provided feedback. Um, we also did a pre-assessment. And then in terms of SDM, we have assisted with the specifications, especially for the banking tender. We've also assisted with the asset register and also some audit assistance. And we, we assisted greatly with the asset register that the municipality had provided for you. And then in consequence management, we've also raised awareness pertaining to the preventative control guidelines. And then the audit outcomes, we have also supported the municipality with regards to engaging with the Auditor General. Then honorable chairperson and committee members, uh, I'm almost close to the end of the of the of the presentation and i just thought that i must also highlight the risks you know that are linked to non-compliance because if municipalities continue not to comply we especially with regards to budget management we may have um, more interventions that will have to to be implemented at provincial at, 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 at municipal level. And then in terms of in-year monitoring, we are seeing the risk that most of the decisions that are taken by the council or by the municipality will not be informed because the information would not be up to date. And non-compliance or the risk um, around uh, the revenue management is that this will have an impact on service delivery as there may be a lot of interruptions and loss of income. And with regards to expenditure, the risk that we are seeing is that um, non-compliance will lead to an increase in UIF and W, 
and the inability to attract investment opportunities in the municipal areas. And then lastly, with regards to the grant management, um, grant management non-compliance, we are seeing a situation where um, the risk involved would be that the repayment of unconditional, of unspent conditional grants to the National Revenue Fund will be offset against the equitable share, which will then hamper the infrastructure development. So these are just the risks that we are seeing as provincial treasury relating to that, uh, relating to the non-compliance by the municipality. And then I think most of the issues that have been raised here in terms of the key challenges I have already <coughs> alluded to, especially with regards to, to budget management, where we say that number one, the budgets are not credible and they are not funded. And there's also slow progress with regards to the conditional grants and revenue. Uh, there's loss of revenue due to excessive water and, and electricity losses and failure by municipalities to pay creditors when they become due may actually result in some litigation. Uh, I will not necessarily go through the other ones, uh, Chairperson. And then in terms of the final observation by the committee is that we are saying that the municipalities are still failing to prioritize filling, filling vacant, vacant posts with skilled personnel and the municipalities continue to adopt unfunded budget despite uh, Treasury's recommendations. There is still no strict implementation of credit control and debt uh, collection policies, uh, thus resulting in, um, in a very low cash coverage by the municipality. And uh, the municipality do, do not have correct reliable data resulting in incorrect billing. Therefore, they must actually embark on a process of data cleansing project to ensure correct data billing. Uh, fourthly, municipalities fail to honor and adhere to repayment agreements with ESCOM. And I think it's because of the reasons that uh, I have already alluded to in the presentation and that uh, those where financial recovery plans have been um, developed, they are not implementing those FRPs because FRPs are supposed to assist the municipality with expenditure reduction, and they should also be aligned to the GM's performance agreement. And then also municipalities are still struggling with institutionalization of contract management, uh, and also to ensure that the skills transfer is achieved. And then lastly, as a PT, we are also prioritizing support to municipalities that uh, receive disclaimer opinions and those that are continuing to, uh, to submit the financial statements uh, late. On that note, uh, honorable members, uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Can we remove the presentation from the screen? So that then we allow the cock to present. The cock Department of Cooperative Governance National. No, thank you, Chairperson, and uh, good morning, all my members of the honorable um, committee including my colleagues in the province as well as uh, here in national. Let me indicate that uh, uh, Mr. Ramadje will do the presentation um, because uh, I'm with, Mr. with Sylvia Harder Brown, who is actually leading the team for, for, for Northern Cape, but I am representing the DG and as he, she has apologized. Can we allow through your chair that Ms. Ramadje then run quickly through the presentation just to support what has been already mentioned by our provincial departments. Thank you very much. Okay, over to the colleague. Yeah, uh, good morning, um, uh, Chairperson. Yes, good, good morning, uh, uh, Chairperson. Um, good morning to you too. Uh, somebody from that side will 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 project the, the the presentation, or should we just go to the latter part, chair? Um, because the the first part has been covered both by the by the uh, uh, Cogstar presentation as well as 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 treasury. 
Um, yeah, maybe we can we can just make brief comments on the on our own observations, but but also the work that we do jointly with particularly with with Coxter, um, in terms of dealing with some of these uh, uh, governance challenges. We want to indicate that the district is is generally very stable and has been able to, to offer support to, to, to locals uh, as indicated by Coxta um, in terms of project management, uh, master plan development, internal audit, those kinds of functions. Uh, functions. Uh, their committees are, are, are fairly well functional, internal audit, MPEC, uh, as, a, as, a, as a district municipality that is. Um, meetings taking place as, as, as required. In terms of the Khatong, um, relatively stable uh, in terms of governance and, 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 and politically, with some of the committees constituted and, 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 and functional. Um, yeah, I think uh, like, like uh, our colleagues from Coxta indicated that the Khatong has been experiencing a number of protests, uh, which are mainly necess necessitated by challenges in in with, with 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 service delivery, and that has been the case over the last few years. We have we have been with Coxter there to to try and and, and intervene um, in in some of these engagements. Uh, Maharing, there was some instability, and I think advocate uh, indicated. Uh, early in 2020, but there was provincial intervention from a political side, which also then led to the to the change in the mayoral mayoral office. Um, there might still be challenges with 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 the with the director posts for community services and technical uh, services. About a month ago, when we engaged with the municipality from the infrastructure MIG expenditure point of view, they indicated that uh, they were about to do the the, the appointment for the technical uh, uh, director. We just need to check where, where that process is. Pukwane, um, honorable chair and honorable members, um, the, 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 our counterparts from Coxta have already indicated um, where we are. All we can indicate with, with Pukwane uh, chair also in, in terms of the, the, the comment that honorable chair made at the beginning. Um, our observation is that as far as Pukwane is concerned, they started from a very low base where over time um, the, the, their systems um, had all kinds of challenges. So, so what they're basically involved in is almost your systems re-engineering uh, as part of the, of the recovery plan for Pukwane as part of the intervention that the provincial executive uh, has, uh, has uh, initiated there. But we, we, we are confident that they are beginning to make small but very significant um, steps towards towards normalizing. It will take a long time. We must admit, for for us to be able to see um, full and convincing improvement from where we, we sit. But but looking at some of the 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 the, the significant steps that they are making, <clears throat> we are confident um, that if we maintain that momentum uh, that has been established by the administrative team that the. The provincial government has deployed there, as well as a technical engineer that MISA has deployed there. There, there would be there would be there would be uh, uh, improvement in the in the longer term. Um, so, Plaiki, uh, I think the, the the counterparts as well as the MEC have indicated um, that we we are concerned about the 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 the, the level of of performance of Sol Plaiki um, as a secondary city. Um, but there were also challenges uh, mainly of, 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 of the relationship between the community and the, and the municipality, but also some of the internal uh, political challenges that, that was observed a year or two ago within, within the, the, the municipality. And as we indicate, we, we saw the recall of the mayor uh, back then in 2019, um, dismissal of, of, of councillors, sustained tensions as I indicate, uh, between the community and, and, and municipality. Um, tensions, uh, particularly between a highly unionized uh, uh, labor force in the municipality and, 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 the, and the municipality itself. Um, and, and there's still that uh, long 
the suspension of the of the precordial scenario suspension of the MM and the and the CFO. Um, the 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 minister did engage with the MEC. I think it was last year or so uh, to look at some of these things, and 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 we we trust um, that the initiatives that the province has uh, embarked upon in terms of seeking to start to to stabilize uh, Sol Plaki will 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 bear fruits. Um, yeah, that was Sol Plaki. Yeah, broadly, I think in terms of service delivery, chairperson. It is, um, as has been indicated by our colleagues, uh, which is an across the board general challenges of infrastructure in the in the Northern Cape, as well as in this specific district. Um, infrastructure lapses due to aging nature of the infrastructure, which lead to uh, 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 water leaks, sewer of overflows, on the streets, uh, poor maintenance, and so on and so forth. Roads are, are in a in a poor state, potholes, also because of the of the of the aging nature of these roads, but also um, poor uh, poor poor maintenance, particularly in Solplaki Maharing and and the when you drive around those those areas. <clears throat> There's a key challenge that, that that we are observing around around wastewater treatment plants, and we are indicating that, uh, honourable chair and honourable members. Because the district is flanked uh, by two major rivers, which is the Orange and the Val, um, which um, are very, very delicate in terms of if, if we get to a point where there would be Jay, two of we, we are not, uh, we lost uh, the presenter. No, we can hear the presenter. It will be only you. Bumza. We can hear the presenter, it can be only you. Who else can hear the presenter? Honorable Mpumza, proceed, uh, Mr. Ramat. Yeah, th thanks, uh, Honorable Chair uh, and, and, and Honorable Members. <clears throat> yeah, I was just indicating that one of the, the concerning areas Broadly within within municipalities within municipalities in the northern Cape, but specifically also in the in the Francis Bar district, is the state of uh, of wastewater treatment uh, uh, facilities. Um, we've had a couple of parliamentary questions, for example, Chairperson, on the on the supply, the quality of water, and stuff like that. All we can also indicate, um, just in that vein, is that, for example, when when we had the recent floods, we we. We, we had a lot of contamination into the into the into all the rivers, basically, both the Orange and the Val, which which are flanking this this district. And what we have uh, picked up is that for a municipality to be able to treat the the water that they they pump out of the river to a required level, you require extra effort, extra energy, extra resources, <clears throat> which are always um, challenging for some of the municipalities because of the effluent that comes upstream, in fact, as far as Mpumalanga, the Val in Gauteng and parts of the Free State and flows all the way down to River Ten in, 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 in Kimbali. Um, and therefore, there, there, there will be a need for, 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 for government broadly then to start prioritizing these wastewater treatment plants. We have flagged this, this matter as part of the DDM um, pr priority project, and, and I will come to that at a later stage. We are experiencing increasing vandalism and criminal activity around municipal infrastructure within the district. Um, and I think our colleagues from Treasury have also indicated uh, low spending on, on infrastructure um, and, and so on and so on. The Sanral Meta uh, uh, chairperson, we are indicating it here at the, at the service delivery issue. We have had uh, discussions with the, with the province, uh, I think just about a month ago, and we agreed that at the technical level, we must then pursue this, um, this solution. Um, at the, but at the same time, um, escalated to the provincial to the provincial leadership, uh, first through the, the proper protocols within the province, but also through the DDM uh, champion uh, of the of the of the of the of the district, who is uh, Deputy Minister Not Olo Kivit. So, so the the, the central thing, um, as Advocate Manyere indicated, Honourable Chair and Members, it is preventing the community of Ikuteng and Bichuswani. On the other side, on the on the north, on the southern side of the N12, to receive water, and all the pipe work has been done. All we need is just that authorization 
to 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 let the pipe work cross the cross cross the the highway at the at the bridge level. But engagements we can assure you are, are continuing, and we are supporting those engagements. Um, I think the, the the next slide would have been just an indication of hotspots, but the 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 the, the basic hotspots are around wastewater treatment works, which I've already indicated, particularly in basically in all in all the, the municipalities, but luckily the engagements between the province ourselves and, uh, and the Department of Water, Water Affairs has prioritized some of these, these um, uh, wastewater treatment works uh, to ensure that we eliminate uh, uh, raw, raw sewer spillage and stuff like that. In Maharing, for example, the, the pump station was, was addressed in 2017-18. Um, through through the Arbic funding, uh, the problem has since been been resolved. Um, some some funding has also been provided to 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 Maharing in terms of the the the, the water demand and low pressure uh, challenges that we had. Um, Pukwane, there has also been some funding from 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 the from WSIG for 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 the for the next financial year municipal financial year, um, and then Soraplaki has also been supported through. Uh, the PMU that the the, the advocate mentioned uh, through the support that MISA has been MISA has been providing, and and the DWS to ensure that uh, we we support that municipality in terms of the, the 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 fixing of the wastewater treatment plants. I think the financial challenges my colleagues have have adequately covered covered that and the 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 filling of vacancies, um, except to emphasize on on filling of vacancies, chair. And honorable members, that the filling of senior management positions is critical if, if municipalities are to deliver on their constitutional mandates and, and commitments as per their IDPs and their SDB IPs. And therefore, this is where council decisions are critical, um, chairpersons, to ensure that uh, uh, appropriately qualified personnel are employed into these section 56 uh, municipal, uh, 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 senior management positions as well as municipal municipal managers um some of the the key interventions specifically from from cocta in terms of covid response um the, the district received some allocation around uh, uh, seven reprioritized projects i think there were four in in the hong one in in sorry no no four in in the hong and i think one uh, in in Pukwane and another one in Pukwane for the next financial year, um, yeah, and I think one more for for the Khatong for the next financial year, which was part of the response that Cocta instituted to enable municipalities to be able to respond to the COVID challenges around water provision um, and and infrastructure improvement uh, to ensure uh, adequate response. <clears throat> now, chair, in terms of the the, the DDM implementation. Um, the district champion uh, is, is Deputy Minister of Public Works, uh, Deputy Minister Not All Give It. Uh, she is paired with, with MEC Bentley Fass, uh, who, who, who is the, the, the MEC for local government, uh, for cooperative governance and, 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 and housing, human settlements, and, and traditional affairs. Uh, I just can indicate, Chair, that. Uh, in August last year, the premier convened all the, the, the champions that have been assigned to the Northern Cape. Um, and we are cognizant, uh, honorable chair, of the question I think that you asked, was it last week or the other week, as to whether there has been proper briefing by COCTA on towards the, 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 the district champions in terms of what the expectations are. I remember you, you, you had fielded this question specifically to Mr. Fosi, so I can, I show Chairperson and, and Honorable Committee members that uh, uh, the Premier of the Northern Cape did convene all, all of them at the same time together with the executive uh, mayors of all the districts and a presentation was made towards, towards them as well as their HODs in terms of exactly what it is that the district development model seeks to achieve and what their specific roles would be, would be expected, particularly as political champions. Um, subsequent to that, Deputy Minister uh, give it also engaged with the district leadership uh, sometime in September last year, um, together with the with the with the MEC, as I as I as I said, uh, mayors and councillors. Uh, and following that engagement, that virtual engagement in September, 
there was a physical engagement uh, with, with, with the deputy minister and, and, and MEC and all the, all the mayors uh, required on the 2nd of February this year to prepare for, for the district launch. Uh, Advocate Mangening indicated that. The district launch would have been earlier um, this month or late in February, but has had, has had to be postponed uh, due to commitments from uh, Deputy Minister Kivitz's uh, side. Uh, we are just awaiting the, the announcement of the of the date for the for the launch um, from from the from the, the, the from the public works ministry. In the meantime, Chairperson, there's a technical committee um, that is that is basically preparing, doing some preparation work for 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 this launch, um, which is made up jointly of the district, the province, ourselves, and and sector departments, MISA. Is included in in that in that uh, uh, committee. Part of the of the task of that uh, of that committee is to ensure that we 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 support the process of developing the first generation one plan as it is required by Cocta, um, and to prepare a proper briefing for the political principals, especially the champions, uh, both the deputy minister and the MEC at the at the at the launch. Now, in terms of the the key uh, issues, developmental issues, spatial development issues that require prioritization and reprioritization in pursuit of the objectives of the, of the DDM, Honorable Chair and members. Um, a few things have been, have been captured, mainly which have been captured through the IDP of the district, as well as the Provincial Growth and Development Strategy, which would then find expression um, in the in the one plan uh, that we are currently uh, assisting the, the the district to to, to develop um, six key issues uh, just at high level um, accelerating the upgrading of informal settlements um, that is what, one of the matters that that would require a priority bulk infrastructure planning uh, development implementation and maintenance I've already indicated that as a response to some of the challenges that we are experiencing in terms of the, um, the health of, of infrastructure within, within the district. Regeneration of the, of the townships um, through the precinct development uh, uh, planning initiatives, and then specifically upgrading wastewater treatment works to prevent overflow of raw sewer. I've already indicated that. Um, and then the fifth one, developing um, economic stimulation um, and, and economic enhancement zones and, and revitalization zones within, within the district, within the province. And then lastly, strengthening local governance as well as fiscal sustainability within, within the, 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 the district. There are then specific um, identified key uh, developmental areas that have been identified, Chairperson, in terms of the, the, the DDM. I can just quickly run run through them uh, per municipality in terms of the Khatong. Um, the, the PGDS as well as the, the IDP of the district, which will then translate into projects that will go into the one plan, includes the, the protection of the, of, the, of the Orange River um, in terms of the natural areas, the expansion of the, of the Val Hamahara scheme, which is a water development um, scheme, uh, housing policy to ensure that we deal with urban, urban, urban development and informal settlements, but also in terms of industrial areas, looking at issues around mining projects, but also specifically around uh, rehabilitation of, of, of former mining, mining areas, as, as, as we would know, um, that the district is, is on, on a decline in terms of uh, mining activity. And therefore a lot of repair, remedial work would have to be done around areas uh, dumps and, and 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 so on and, and so forth. When it comes to to Mahareng, um, it, it's, it's around priorities would be around agri park development, game farming, uh, agricultural industries, and, and and so on and so forth. Um, and then mining again um, to ensure that uh, we 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 would then ensure that the the social labor plans of mining companies are implemented and do comply. With the with the with the with the requirements of the of the of the of the relevant act, I think it's the PMR E Act. Um, and there was there was Maharing, and then for for Pukwane, 
uh, one of the, the major projects that could actually unleash uh, the potential of the district would be the Fall Hearts uh, irrigation scheme, which would need to be expanded because you've got a lot of water around, around that area uh, generated by this scheme. We would therefore require to, to expand it to make sure that it benefits um, the farming community as we also strive to expand farming um, across all, 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 all sectors of society so that we don't just leave it at the previous, at the previous ownership of the farming uh, capa capability. Within, within Pukwan also, we, we're looking at the, the development of pick and nut um, development in that, in that, in that area. Um, and then there's a plan also in, within the province uh, in that district specifically to, to, to start looking at industrial, rather agricultural related industries, um, which would then feed from the agricultural wealth of that, of that, of that region. Um, I think in terms of soil plaguey, it's also the expansion of agro, agro processing and the protection of the, of the river again, but particularly for soil plaguey, what would be relevant, what would be appropriate uh, chair and honorable members would be starting to support the local municipality in terms of economic policy, land use management, um, and, and, and the development of economic uh, uh, revitalization and stimulation zones, as I, as I indicate, indicated. Um, now, as I end, uh, Chairperson, just specific areas of support that uh, COCTA within its various units, business units, has been supporting the, the, the district and, and individual municipalities in terms of service delivery. Uh, MISA is, is on the ground supporting about three, four municipalities um, and supporting those that, that they may be required to support as and when. Uh, they've conducted water and sanitation infrastructure assessments and electrical network performance monitoring strategy for Sol Plaki. Um, and and a, 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 a civil engineer has been deployed to assist the administrative team in, in Pukwane uh, to also assist Mahare. And, and therefore MISA is also taking the lead in terms of assisting us to resolve that, that, that part of the central uh, impasse that, that we, we have. In terms of uh, MIG and other infrastructure uh, 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 grant spending, of course, the question would be, what is it that we do when municipalities are not, are not, are not spending? But we can assure the committee that from, from the side of DCOC, jointly with, with, with COCSTA and MISA, uh, municipalities are engaged one-on-one -on -one about two, three times a year as part of the monitoring system to, to, to do that, to ensure that municipalities comply with the, with the DORA uh, uh, Act, the MIG policy and the, and the MIG framework. Um, of course, these initiatives are not always giving us the results that we, we, we desire. We will be honest about that, uh, Chairperson, uh, because the, the final uh, decision um, is actually taken by the, by the municipality. Um, and therefore, it is important that all of us then must play the role that we are required to play in the value chain of, of, of grant spending and grant utilization for the benefit of service delivery for the people of, of, of South Africa. I indicated that MISA supports all municipalities in the district to compile business case reports for funding uh, of, of infrastructure master plans. Um, yeah, and I've already indicated the central, the central issue. In terms of good governance, uh, Chair and Honorable Members, um, through a partnership between DCOC, National Treasury, and SALGA, we are promoting the functionality of, of MPEX to improve governance in all municipalities. Um, to ensure that they are able to do their work around IU, FW, and, and, and so on and, and so forth. Of course, the performance of, of MPEX are at different levels, but we continue to engage with them. We were actually in, supposed to be in an engagement last week, which was then postponed because of engagements that Treasury has, uh, but that has been since postponed to the, to the 20, 21st. Um, COCTA, as the custodian of, of the regulations on the recruitment of of senior managers continues to provide support both to the province and to specific municipalities uh, to ensure compliance. Uh, just as, as an example, uh, the district, I think a year or two ago, um, had, had tabled a, a request for waiver uh, with the minister for, for two positions, which unfortunately were, were declined by the minister on the base of the merit. Of course, we know that the, the district will not be happy about that, but we are indicating this just to demonstrate the fact that where we require to do support and due diligence, 
we will do that, even if it's not to the to the to the to the favor of the of the of the municipality of the of the municipality. Um, on the section 139 intervention in Pukwane, we, we, we continue to journey with the province um, right from the beginning uh, through the litigation processes, uh, through the, the development of the, of the recovery plan, um, and including the induction of the new council, which we did at the, at the, at the beginning of, of, of December um, in, in Pukwane. In terms of urban planning, DCOC supports Sol Plague specifically as part of the intermediate city support uh, program. Um, and, and as part of, of, of that initiative, the municipality had received 2.9 million since 2019-20 in terms of the, the urban development grant, um, integrated urban development uh, grant. Um, and then in terms of the disaster management, let me just end with that one, uh, disaster management chair. Um, and, and I remember at the beginning you, you, you indicated uh, uh, whether, well, you, you wanted to check whether National is supporting the district in terms of uh, disaster response. Yes, indeed, that is the case. Um, there, there are committees that have been set, up, set aside to, to assess the, the extent of damage that happened within these municipalities um, and, and begin to assign responsibilities to specific sectors where sectors are, are involved. Where we are at at the moment is that um, municipalities had, had, had submitted their, their list of priorities Cocta went through that to assess uh, whether all of them are disaster related um, and then have, have returned the, the list back to the, to the municipalities to start to prioritize those that are specifically um, um, disaster related uh, so that we ensure that the response of the National Disaster Management Unit at Cocta can meaningfully to respond to some of these challenges while at the same time um, coordinating other sector departments both at, at provincial level and at, at national level to ensure that municipalities are, are capacitated to deal with, with the challenges. Colleagues at NDMC um, just uh, made me aware that part of the challenge, particularly in the province, is the mud housing that we experience in some of the, the areas, uh, areas of Jumrolo, which is not necessarily in this district. Um, and therefore human settlements, which is under the, the portfolio of Coxta, is going to be very, very critical in terms of assisting to respond. But all I can say, uh, in conclusion, Chair, is that uh, the, the National Disaster Management uh, Center is working with the, with the, with the, with the PDMC to, to ensure that there's adequate response. The district itself does not yet have a district disaster uh, management center, but they do have a, 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 a facility which is operated, operating on a 24-hour basis, which is uh, fielded uh, by, by, by capable people. Um, however, we have impressed upon both the NDMC and the PDMC to ensure that they continue to partner with the district um, to ensure that the municipality plans and budgets for a fully fledged uh, uh, disaster, disaster, district disaster management um, center. Yeah, Chairperson, uh, in terms of the, of the support and, and, and the contribution that we have, um, I, I can stop at this and then we, we, we will uh, continue to respond when, when, when there are further questions. I, I want to thank you very much uh, honorable chair and honorable members and honorable MECs and, and colleagues. Thanks very much. Thank you for the eloquent presentation. You took more time than we anticipated because you were saying you recovered. But yeah, it's when somebody's doing the work, it's a sign that you are there. Can we allow Salga to make a presentation, please? Thank you very much, Chair. Okay. Um, yeah. After that's apologize. much better. <laughs> yeah, that's better. For well, earlier, yeah. Um, a lot of things are happening at once this time of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, but let me greet mm -hmm. the Chair um, uh, of the portfolio. It's been a long time. You, I, I'm missing you because you, you promised that you would come back to Career Bear, where, where, where I'm residing. but. I'm still waiting on that promise, Chair. Um, yeah. But let me give you an also briefly pass our honorable MEC of corporate uh, governance here in our province and also the national department. But Chair, um, let me just let me just first first mention that uh, I think that Salga continues to play the role that 
it's trying to do to assist municipalities in, in, in our province, um, especially chair, to ensure that the municipalities implement and adhere to the audit action plans, um, which I think the comprehensive report that has been presented by African Manjanik and also Treasury here in our province um, uh, alluded to. So I think we are trying to, to, to still assist with all the relevant stakeholders in, in that regard. Um, also, Chair, that um, one has to acknowledge also the concerted effort that was made by the affected municipalities to address certain issues that were raised um, by the Auditor General and uh, also Treasury in, in general. I think, Chair, that um, if you would allow me, I would hand over to uh, um, Madeleine Brandt, our CEO of Saga in the province, to present our presentation. Through you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Can we allow the PDO to present as directed by the Councillor? Thank you so very, very much, Honorable Chairperson. I would just, I'm having a technical difficulty. I cannot share from this side. So the presentation has been sent, and I just hope that the committee clerk would be able to assist by sharing from, from his or her side. Please, Chairperson. Can we ask the CEO? Staff, I will getting the presentation on the screen, please. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Lance, for sharing. Can we end up Thank you. Video? Hmm? Councillor Owen, can you mute your microphone, please? Sorry, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, and uh, thank you for the assistance with this uh, sharing of the content. In terms of Salga's presentation, Chairperson, we are really going to be very brief. Um, in terms of our table of contents, we would just like to provide an introduction. We will then indicate areas of support that Salga has rendered in the demarcated municipal areas. We will then also look at general observations that we've made insofar as uh, quarterly reports that, that we've analyzed and as well as also the hands-on supports that we've hands-on support that we've um, uh, rendered to the municipalities. And then of course, we will conclude our input. The next slide. Um, and before we start, we would or ever like to make the following points, just to say that all protocol is observed. We acknowledge all the presentations that have been made so far because it provides a particular context in which Salga's presentation will fit in. And we deeply trust that the information that we provide here will be of value to the committee. The purpose of this presentation is, as I said before, to outline the main support interventions Salga has continued to provide to the municipalities of concern, and then of course, to highlight our main observations. In terms of um, the support provided by Salga um, during 2020, 2022, um, if one can just zoom into the areas of economic growth and investment for now, um, we would note that um, Salga, there was a national partnership with Salga and the UNDP, where seven SMMEs in the Francis Bart District Municipality were supported to produce 
5,502 masks for worthy distribution in this district. Um, seven SMMEs were uh, benefited from this, with one from Mahareng, one from Dikhletlong, and five then from the Soplaiki municipal area. In terms of municipal finance, we know that Apokwani municipality is still under administration. However, they've requested the support of Salga in finalization of the AFS and hands-on support in terms of, of this was rendered um, in, in, in the third uh, quarter. In terms of municipal trading services, uh, we supported Dikhlatlong and Maharang municipalities on the development of transport and roads bylaws. Waste management, Pakwane, Mahareng, and Dihlatlong were supported to develop and update the waste management pl plans. We can move on to the next slide. Then around inclusive communities, um, we are supporting uh, or facilitating rather the renewal of a memorandum of understanding between the Francis Bard municipality and uh, district municipality and the Salt Lake local municipality. And that relates around the rendering of environmental health services where uh, the, the district and, um, as where Salt Lake is rendering the service on behalf of the district, and it is an MOU that has been in existence. We will just have to 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 uh, renew that as the timeline is coming to an end soon. Then, in terms of municipal capabilities and governance, uh, we provided training on conciliation and arbitration for the whole uh, for all of the municipalities in the district. There's also hands-on support and advice to municipalities on labor and human resources issues that we've rendered, and we've counted around about 20 activities undertaken in the third quarter only. Then around intergovernmental relations and council welfare, we uh, have participated or rather uh, in the con council induction and training for the newly elected uh, council of Pukwani municipality. Um, we also regularly participate in the relevant IGR forums in the province, like your provincial uh, uh, prof joints, as we call it. They're, we're also part of the rapid response task team convened by the MEC of Coxter to, to, to zoom into uh, a protest at local level. And then, of course, we continue to lobby for the interests of municipalities as informed by the needs that they identify. If we, the, in terms of the general observations, chairperson, we 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 would we would we note that this is almost a summary of what has already been said. But I think it's it's important that as Olga, we 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 just emphasise these observations once again. We we. Observe the impact of COVID on the financial positions of municipalities. As much as it for this district, it also impacts on, on municipalities throughout the province. The impact of natural disasters on municipal and private infrastructure. The ailing primary and secondary networks of, 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 of our infrastructure. Then, of course, increased service delivery and community protest activity. The vacancy rate of the top six officials is an average of 50% for the district, with Pakwani at 80% being the highest. And one can see there is a direct link in, in, in how uh, low the asset is performing in relation to critical posts not being filled or high vacancy rates. We also found that gender representation is in senior positions is still lacking. Um, we are entering a new electoral cycle for the local government sector, by hopefully the end of this year, and this will introduce a new set of councillors uh, uh, with uh, new experiences, but also uh, uh, a set of councillors that need to be reorientated within to the local government sector. And this is about, you know, uh, uh, almost transformation or change management at the local level, and it, it has a bearing on the operations of, of the municipalities. We, we also uh, would like to make the point that a capacitated local government sector at all levels of, of operations are key to ensure success. And what we mean by that is to say that we need um, a capacitated councils, we need capacitated uh, uh, top management, but also capacitated technical areas that, that, that can sustain and maintain service delivery at the local level. We wish to also say that um, intergovernmental relation structures must be supported by synchronized systems to ensure a coordinated state machinery. It is no longer uh, good enough that we just coordinate very well at IJR structures, but the structures must be supported by systems that underpin uh, the workings of, of, of a state machinery in sync with one another. And I believe that is envisaged by, by our constitution. We can move on to the next slide. 
And with that, we just want to say thank you. Bye, danke, Kelly Boga. That will be the, the input for Salga Northern Cape. As we say, it is presented within a particular context. And with that, Chairperson, we submit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, PDO. I think we are done with our presentations. I prefer we, as members of parliament, we, municipalities don't present. We have read your presentation. Uh, so, and I, I said these other colleagues must be the ones that present so that if there are areas of difference, as and when you respond to our questions, you'll be able to indicate as well. Uh, mayors, executive mayors, can I check whether Francis Bard has joined in or not? Um, Chairperson, uh, is the MM, um, the executive mayor had connected, I don't know, I think he lost uh, his connection, I'll try just to um, confirm if um, he will reconnect again, but um, the MM is here, uh, the CFO as well as the director responsible for planning, acting director responsible for planning and development. And there's no any other councillor? Uh, as, um, yes, the mayor is not here, and I don't see any other councillor. But um, um, I'll just confirm quickly uh, for you, Chairperson, if you allow me. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Honourable uh, member. Thank you, MM. Colleagues, can I see a show of hands on who want to deal with them? You could shelf. Francis Bar for now. We can deal with them in the evening. I think that will be the best if the mayor doesn't come in. Let me check my participant list. I see it's only honorable bring was raised. Is end on the platform. Uh, all of you covered. Only end that I could see is the one of honorable break. Now, yeah, now you are coming. It will be honorable Teza, honorable space. Honorable Jereko. Even who's still speaking? Honorable Tlo. Uh, Mayor Mabilo, you must lower your hand now. It's not yet time for you. Your time will come. Just lower your hand. Those are the only hands I'm having thus far. Can I hand over to Honorable Brink? Thanks very much, Chairperson. Um, please tell me if my connection fails me and then I'll switch off the video. Uh, person relates to the first question relates to the province's obligation to intervene when the municipalities uh, cannot fulfill the executive obligations. And maybe it's of some use just to read that provision of the constitution again. And I'm not gonna read the entire provision, just the, just the first one, um, which is the issuing of notices to the municipal council. So section 139.1a, provides that if a municipality cannot or does not fulfill an executive obligation in terms of the constitution or legislation, the relevant provincial executive, that's the provincial cabinet, 
may intervene by taking any appropriate step to ensure the fulfillment of that obligation, including issuing a directive to the municipal council, not the mayor, not the uh, municipal manager, the municipal council, describing the extent of the f uh, failure to fulfill its obligations and stating any steps required Can the colleagues hear Honorable Brink? For local government in the province. No, sir. Conks, uh, sorry. Honorable Brink, can you repeat can you the last part of your question? We couldn't hear you. The last right, part. So let, me, let me take my video off. Uh, yes, I think that will go a long way. Yes. Right. Let's try. It. So, yeah. So, the I was last part of your question. Eh? Yeah, as referring to section 139.1a of the constitution, that is uh, the power to issue the municipal council with a directive describing the extent of, its, uh, of the failure of the municipality to meet an obligation and stating steps required to be taken to meet this obligation. That is with the, that competence is with the provincial executive, the cabinet on advice from the from the MEC for local government. And so this is a question to the, the local government MEC uh, here. Um, what notices has the provincial executive issued to municipalities, uh, to the municipalities in this Francis Bark district uh, in respect of this provision? And which of those municipalities are yet to respond to these notices? In other words, which of the municipalities are on record as being in default of their executive obligations as per a decision of the provincial executive uh, and have failed to take steps to remedy that, that problem? Now, let me give you an example. For one, uh, if I understand correctly, uh, Dick Lahong failed to conclude performance management agreements with senior managers which is a breach of, they are compelled to conclude performance management agreements. Has the MEC, the provincial cabinet, written to the municipal council uh, and placed them on terms in this respect? Uh, this, is, this is one example, but the question relates to all of the instances so that we are exactly clear whether in fact the province does write to the municipal council or whether it just uh, hopes that these problems will be resolved or it just speaks to, to officials and mayors and so on. Um, the second question is related and we heard here chair that provincial treasury referred to in some instances capital grants being used to cover operational expenditure which is quite serious. That is not what capital grants are intended for. What steps have the provincial executive taken to ensure consequences for that? Have you also written to, to the municipal council in question to bring this under their attention and to ask that steps be taken? Or is this just one of those issues again, where officials speak to each other, but council is completely cut out of, uh, out of the, the uh, terms uh, under which this failure of an executive obligation needs to be remedied. There was an indication also from provincial treasury that uh, at least uh, one uh, CFO vacancy, uh, vacancies, there might be more, cannot be filled. So the, the municipality cannot fill the CFO vacancy and this is given as a reason for all manner of non-compliance uh, and poor financial management. Has the provincial treasury offered to transfer an official uh, to act in that position as CFO? Uh, and if not, why not? In respect of the same municipality, uh, I believe it, it was the same municipality, there's an indication that the CFO is on special leave and this has been going on for two years. 
I'm not quite sure, Chairperson, what special leave means, because no such provision for special leave is made in terms of the Systems Act for a senior manager. Does special leave mean that this person has been suspended? And if so, uh, why has the Municipal Council not dealt with the suspension in terms of the re uh, relevant statutory framework? That is either the financial misconduct regulations of the MFMA or the Systems Act disciplinary regulations. And if you follow those, um, suspensions are precautionary pending the finalization of a disciplinary hearing, and there are timelines. So if this person has been on suspension for two years, what's the matter? And, and has any Section 139.1a directives been issued to tell that municipal council what its obligations are and putting it in terms to ensure that this disciplinary process is completed. Now, Chairperson, I can only assume that special leave means some sort of a, a suspension because I don't understand what two years spent is going to take responsibility for paying that salary. Uh, then, uh, thirdly, Chairperson, the MEC has got uh, an obligation in terms of the Systems Act to monitor compliance minimum competencies of senior managers and so forth. Uh, can the MEC please confirm whether uh, he has acted on the instances where senior managers don't have the minimum requirements, including taking possible legal action against councillors for appointing uh, people who aren't qualified. The correct answer is that an unqualified person was appointed and the province is helping this person to do the job or training this person to do the job. That's not correct. That's not compliance with the law. The, the law doesn't allow unqualified people to be appointed and then trained into the position. Um, corrective action must actually be taken and there must be consequences. Fourthly, Chair, uh, Section 106 of the Systems Act permits the province to order forensic investigations into a particular municipality. Um, and can we please have an indication of the municipalities that form part of this district? Uh, how many of those Section 106 investigations are still outstanding in respect of each of the municipalities and whether there's any feedback from investigations conducted by the Hawks in respect of tender irregularities in Salt Plaiki in particular. Uh, Chair, in terms of uh, my fifth question, the province made reference to a project management unit and this capacity being sourced from DBSA, which, which is just another way of saying, if I understand it correctly, that municipalities use the DBSA panel of service providers uh, to appoint contractors and consultants. My question is, does the MEC regard this as a substitute for recruiting internal engineers uh, and if not, what steps are these municipalities being supported and encouraged to take to grow their own timber? Chair, the last question concerns Francis Bart uh, District Municipality. What percentage is spent on, on salaries and employee related costs? Uh, that would tell us what is left for a, a support and shared services function and projects and so forth. Um, but also, has this district municipality taken any steps to help the local municipalities that can't recruit a CFO, that don't have engineering and project management capacities? You know, it's great that the district has a clean audit, but if the district uh, does not provide value for local municipalities or for residents directly, then all of the money that it spends on salaries, which I suspect is substantial, uh, is in fact useless. Thanks very much, Chair.
Thank you so much, Honorable Brink. May I request Honorable Teza to be the one that follows? No, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I entered the meeting uh, very, very, very late. Uh, I got the presentations in the middle. Uh, but I, but my please take my apologies for it because uh, of the network glitches that I experienced later, such that I had to move to Parliament to access uh, uh, the network, as it were. No chair, uh, my question is then uh, uh, should relate uh, to, to the manner in which uh, the municipalities are losing uh, a water uh, through water leaks. Uh, it's a cause for concern uh, because already South Africa uh, loses about 1.1 trillion liters of water annually. And there is a 250-517 kiloliters of water pipeline backlog and 351,468 kilometers of un, unpaved roads. And during this process, the state is unable to eradicate these backlogs because of the capacity problem. Uh, what mitigation measures has the uh, district taken to reduce and to ensure that uh, it addresses the, the infrastructure the backlogs within local municipalities uh, uh, in the district? Uh, the second one would relate to uh, section 32 2B of the MFMA which says that a municipality must recover an authorized irregular of fruitless and wasteful expenditure from the person liable for the expenditure unless the expenditure is otherwise. So the question of, of who is responsible and uh, who is to be hold accountable and what actions are taken if there, is, there are any, any, any persons responsible uh, in terms of uh, irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. And then the other issue should relate to uh, the heavily reliance on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on consultants uh, due to to, the, to those vacancies. Uh, can the municipality, uh, I'm just checking here, Jay, if my notes point to that municipality. I think it's Mahare. Can the municipality appraise us in terms of uh, why it does not attract uh, these necessary skills uh, and, and, and fill those vacancies? And uh, could it be that uh, perhaps it's a rural municipality, and, and what, what could be the case? Uh, uh, and if so, what, what, what actions has it taken to advertise a such, such post? Uh, the, almost the last question, Chair. Uh, In terms of what the Auditor General finds, uh, that water losses and non-revenue water are still very high in, the, in local municipalities. Uh, there is a lack of uh, required skills, skills that are, are required on a daily basis. What actions has the has the district taken to ensure that uh, uh, local municipalities indeed uh, harnessed uh, 
and the skills that are regularly needed in, in municipalities uh, uh, to insource them, because uh, you, you, you need those, those, those services regularly there. Why are local municipalities not attracting these skills? And uh, what actions uh, mitigate this, this problem? Because often uh, in the community, we hear a lot about these, these issues. And uh, they seem to be common uh, across municipalities. Uh, the other question then relates to the LED. Chairperson, there is a, there is a general lack of direction uh, in terms of economic uh, development. And state capacity, again, uh, continues to deteriorate, to deteriorate. And uh, my concern is that what, what economic development measures and industrial development measures without having relying on, 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 on these people that are called investors and so forth? What are your ideas around uh, industrialization? Of course, via people that will come into the space and create jobs with a view of exempting these people in the long run because they would have created and improved the revenue uh, uh, of, the, of, of, the, of the municipality, exempting them from, from tax. So what, 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 is the, what is your view in terms of that? I do not want to delve into the, the, the question of the aging infrastructure because my colleague has just covered that issue. But Chair, lastly, lastly, Chair, uh, is the question of uh, cost estimates for the establishment of a fire station in the district. And uh, the common question, the common challenges that are not different to others in, 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 the, in the peripheral areas. Uh, you're poorly structured uh, because the municipality does not have, I think there's one fire station department that is located in Solplak, if, if I'm correct, if my memory serves me right. Uh, that fire, fire department, does it address the issue of, poor, of being poorly structured? Does it address the issue of poor funding, poor resource, poorly, being poorly resourced, understaffed, poor monitoring and compliance on bylaws and sense 1009, standard for community safety against fire, low level of professionalism, no clear plans about fire, no strategic pro programs like physical fitness programs, continuous professional development, fire drills, uh, risk management. Are there specialists like fire inspectors, fire in investigators, plan, examiners, poorly qualified, qualified leaders, uh, implementation of legislation on service deliver, comprehensive resource management, fire master plan. Is it that capacitated uh, to deal with the entire district, the entire former municipalities, will it be able to cover the 13 issues that I have uh, 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 alluded to earlier on here? 
uh, in order to, 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 to address the issue of professionalism in Castage. And what, what measures, uh, 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 if there is, there is lack of which uh, I've mentioned before here, uh, what measures will then be, will then inform uh, the direction towards uh, the improvement of the situation uh, as it relates to fire department. I'm concerned, Chair, about unemployment rate uh, in relation to the LEPs. And the question that I've asked about uh, uh, the, the general economic development and state capacity, uh, which continues to de deteriorate, uh, what actions, apart from the SMMEs, what actions are you taking to, to provide uh, for, 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 for industrial opportunities in the municipality which would create uh, jobs? Because the, your youth there is the one that is not working at, uh, at 19, uh, uh, from 19 uh, years, if I'm correct. And, and your poor households in the municipality uh, live below the, the, the 5,000 bracket uh, chairperson. So what mitigation measures are you going to put in place to ensure that while you are creating that particular uh, uh, plan towards uh, industrialization, uh, then uh, ensures that there is improvement of co the collection of revenue while it closes the gap of the state of rural rurality of the municipality uh, simultaneously. Uh, I think uh, that, that, that should cover my, uh, my questions. Because uh, I went to their, their, their report of 2018-19, and I saw the challenges there versus the opportunities. There were no opportunities, Chair, that were written at all. The only opportunity that was written is that the youth population is 30% of the population is, is, is 19 years. That has potential to lead to learning and acquiring new skills. That what 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 I didn't get the plans in terms of uh, ensuring that the youth the youth is 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 indeed capacitated because the danger is to is to render the youth the youth idling because in that process if the youth is not put in scholarship programs if the youth is not sent to, to countries where education uh, is free for innovation purposes, you are brewing, you are idling yourself as a municipality, actually. And you lack ideas in terms of ensuring that uh, the youth is active. And as such, there is uh, economic activities in terms of first of all, capacitating the youth now, and then uh, ensuring that the scholarship uh, uh, programs. Uh, they, they, there's many countries that can, 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 uh, can, can assist municipalities. I'm sure municipalities do meet with other uh, sister countries uh, in, in, in municipal settings. So thank you very much. Sir. Thank you so much, Honorable Keza. Can I allow honorable speech? Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, uh, my first one is on Saul Plaiki. And I, I want to first make the point that I think, Chairperson, I've made very right at the beginning is that uh, when we receive presentations, um, the presenters must know in the different departments that we actually do research. 
we try to find out exactly what is happening on the ground. And we do receive those feedbacks, even if we can't go there personally. We receive pics of what the roads look like and there's on-site visits by residents and colleagues. So as much as it's been mentioned that there's aging infrastructure, I want to understand chairperson from the management, from the administration of Soplachi municipality, what exactly is happening with regards to the aging infrastructure, in particular, the water and sewage issues that they have. There is apparently nightly water cuts. There's burst pipes across the area and specifically Kimberley. Apparently there is now a sewerage dam that is formed outside of the city and it's posing an environmental and human disaster. The excessive water leaks that have been mentioned, Chairperson, 60%. I want to understand where these water losses derives from. Um, it was found that a recent um, visit to uh, one of the uh, uh, water purification works, Riverton, has uh, resulted in uh, finding that the clarifiers is not working. It means that residents are not have, cannot have purified water, which also poses a huge health risk. And one needs to understand what is being done because I, we don't find, as colleagues have said, what are the solutions to these problems? How are these things being mitigated? Then part of, a, of, of an intervention is that also you try to obviously cut costs and not incur costs. In Sopalaji, I think I saw that there was a consultant appointed to help with um, economic recovery plan. Now, I want to understand, is that not something that the provincial treasury could assist with rather than employ, you know, uh, appointing a consultant to draw up a plan um, of that nature. Then in terms of the vacancy issue that has been um, also addressed, but I just want to understand what is the cost so far for paying the MM CFO that has been on suspension for all this time? And also what is the acting allowance that has been paid for the, a person that's been acting? And what is the status of the disciplinary process in that regard? Um, I think the other one that I want to mention is Maharang. It's low spending on conditional grants. The using of a capital grant for to cover operational expenditure. So I, I, I'm shocked to hear that because I want to know when, what happens then to the planned uh, capital projects uh, if the money spent from the capital grant is now on operational stuff. Um, and then um, Madam Chair, the approval of budgets always late. I want to understand why and how a council can renege on their responsibility to not approve a budget in the process also not then fulfilling their responsibility for public participation on such a budget uh, in its draft form. Do they have an active budget steering committee that sits in this regard? All I think, Chairperson, that this points to me is that there is a general lack of management capacity, skills, and also um, political will. Uh, there's no political will to fix things. And then in the Francis Bart district uh, presentation, there was the issue, and I, I heard the lady from Salga mention that. It is unacceptable to have a 23% women employed that cannot be in line with the employment equity plan that the municipalities have, that you can only have 23% uh, of your staff being women. And that I think is serious and it needs to be addressed, Chairperson. Um, thanks, I want to stop there. Thank you, Honorable Spies. Can I hand over to Honorable Jiroko? Uh, thank, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, firstly, we'll start with the Treasury presentation. Uh, on their report, on their presentation, they have indicated that some of the municipalities are adopting unfunded budget. And they also secondly indicated that uh, municipalities, some of municipalities do have financial recovery plan, 
but they are not implementing that uh, plan, those plans. So I would like to check on their site as treasury, what is it that they are doing in ensuring that municipalities are adopting a funded budget? And if municipality fails to, to adopt a funded budget, what are the consequences from, uh, uh, from treasury on such act? And then we also, uh, on soul plagi, uh, on their presentation, they have indicated that uh, there's an issue of MM and CFO position which remain unresolved. Can they please take us into, consider, into confidence on what are the issues behind those two positions? Uh, on their report also, they have indicated that they are using consultant in order to assist them in transferring skills to the municipality. So can they also uh, brief us to say uh, so far, how do they have two or more st positive stories on skills transfer from the consultant to the municipality? And then on the, the HATO, when you look at the AG's recommendation, it indicates that uh, the municipality is technically bankrupt. Municipality is failing to collect. So I would like to check with the municipality if they do have a revenue collection plan. Are they implementing that plan? And what are the challenges with their uh, revenue collection plan? And uh, Chair, on the other side, uh, I think it was on COCTA uh, report where it speaks about the section 106 that was instituted in 2017. And they also indicated that the, that uh, uh, intervention was interdicted by, by the uh, CFO in, in the municipality. And that uh, case has been postponed for several times. And to date, they have not yet uh, received any verdict regarding that case. So what is it that National COCTA is doing in, in situations like this in order to, uh, to, to assist uh, to resolve that uh, situation? Lastly, Chair, it's on Mahari. On the report, they've indicated that uh, MPEC needs uh, training. So I would like to check with them, what is the current state of MPEC? Is there MPEC having capacity to do its work? Uh, has MPEC uh, then submitted some report to the council? Are those reports uh, 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 report, uh, implemented in council? Or what is the state of MPEC since they, they started in council? Is there any report from MPEC that went to council? Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Director. May I allow Honorable Joe to take the platform? Okay, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. And also welcoming all the officials, the SALCA that are present. Let me just go straight to the annual financial statement that will, my, most of my question will be based on that, that on our 2018-19 annual financial statement, the municipality did not include the extent of payment made in contravention of supply chain management requirements, which resulted in the understatement of irregular expenditure as well as qualification of the financial statement. What has the municipality done to address this? Please share with us. We need to understand it. Number two, what system does the municipality have in place to prevent it from accepting quotation from bidders who are in the employ of the state or connection to any person employed by municipalities? And then, uh, then uh, on the question number three was, uh, what specific measures has the municipality leadership undertaken in line with its oversight responsibility to ensure that the municipality produce, produces accurate and complete financial and performance reports? Then in the Kato, my, that my question will be on, Although the municipality has addressed many of the negative audit findings in respect of the 2018-19 financial year, and thereby moving from 
a disclaimer to a qualified audit in 2019, which uh, that one, uh, which is uh, very good and progressive. But it has once again failed to address the finding relating to the material misstatement of revenue. Now, take us in confidence that what is the challenge in this regard and what is the plan to prevent this reputation in 2020 to 2021. Then again, the Khaton must also elaborate on what system it has in place to prevent the municipality from accepting quotation from bidders who are in the employ of the state and connected to any person employed by the state as well as by us whose tax matters has not been declared to be ordered by the South African Revenue Services. And another question was, was that, what progress has the MPEC made in investigation and in investigating an authorized irregular and fruitless and wasteful expenditure incurred during the 2018-2019 year. So take us into confidence so that we can be with you. Then Mahare, Mahare, Mahare. What progress has the MPEC made investigating an authorized irregular and fruitless and wasteful expenditure incurred during the 2019 financial year. Has the council adopted an investment policy as required in terms of section 13 2 of the Municipal Finance Management Act and Municipal Investment Regulation 3.1a? Can the municipality further confirm whether it made all investment accordance with the requirements of the policy? Then, Another question is, what is preventing the municipality from addressing the repetitive audit qualification areas over the last four financial years? What action is the municipality taking in relation to the section 56 managers who do not have the required highest qualification for the job? And then uh, given the regression of the municipality audit outcome from a qualification in 2018 and 2019 to a disclaimer in 2019 and 2020, is the administrator still confident that he is doing a great job in turning the municipality around? And uh, one last question is, uh, okay, can the municipality explain why it has reduced to cooperate with the Municipal Finance Improvement Program? Then the advisor seconded from the provincial treasury. Then why has the municipality not investigating the allegations of financial misconduct against some of its senior managers as required by the disciplinary regulations of senior management and the MFMA. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, thank you. Yes, thank you, Honorable Show. Colleagues, here are some of the questions that have been raised by members. Yes, Chair. You forget yes. me. Oh, my apologies. Okay. And Honorable Mbumza as well is up. Mm. Okay. Uh, Honorable Kapitava. Uh, thank you, Chaperson. <clears throat> My question will be directed. Let me first uh, welcome the presentation to all presenters that have been presented in, in the committee. Uh, greeting to all municipalities and my colleagues. Chair, <clears throat> my question it will be uh, to the Francis Balt. Uh, 
and yes, to the Francis Ball, because he, I think many of the questions have been taken by my colleagues who, who spoke before me, Chair. Chairperson, <clears throat> my question to the Francis Ball, how is the National Disaster Management Center assisting the district to address the lack the lack of funding for its disaster management function. <clears throat> what action is the municipality taking in, in relation to the middle manage, managers and the SCM manager who do not have a required highest uh, qualification for their jobs. Is, sorry, chair. Yeah, my chair. I, I think uh, my question will be like it will be that. Thanks. Thank you, chairperson. Thank you, chair. My, thank you, honourable governor. May I allow Honorable Mposa to ask the questions that he might be having? <coughs> uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, good morning. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, thanks very much, Chair. Chair, um, the MEC for Cockstar has, 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 in his comments, has raised uh, concerns. Sorry about that. Chair, I mean, I'm sorry about that. He has raised concerns uh, in relation to understanding of the MIG, the issue of uh, protest, um, uh, which is a high concern by COCTA in that province. And this concern by the MEC is alluded to by uh, Salga's presentation. Also, Salga is observing, making an observation of uh, um, a service delivery protest by communities that is increasing, as well as the fact that, that the Francis Bart municipality, um, uh, 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 there's a high vacancy rate at the senior management uh, by 50%. And uh, with uh, the municipality Pugwan, LM, that the vacancy rate of the senior management in the administration is running at 80%. Now, the critical question to ask Shane in relation to this, why is it that uh, one, these uh, municipal councils or municipalities are unable to fill very critical uh, uh, positions in the administration so that municipalities might be in a position uh, to render service delivery effectively to the communities. Secondly, Chair, there is an indication that uh, in relation to this, that uh, there are disciplinary processes where municipalities, because of either uh, maladministration uh, those municipal officials had been placed uh, on leave. But when you look at the report, those leaves, uh, they had been placed on weather precautionary leave since October 2018, is over two years now. And uh, what is it uh, to the oversight structure that is uh, hindered actually fill those positions. What structures are not up to the standard and provide leadership, governance, and oversight function as necessary wanted? Why is it that position? I'm directing this question uh, to the mayors, the speakers of these municipalities. Uh, that have not provided this necessary governance function and oversight and accountability so that municipalities do employ and do their function. That would be my first question, Chair. The second question, Chair, relates to provincial treasury. It raised concerns around the question of uh, 
that a number of these municipalities are adopting unfunded budgets. Do these municipalities not have uh, skilled, competent officials to advise uh, councils not to adopt unfunded budget? To the councillors, particularly the mayors and the speakers of these municipalities present in this meeting, were they aware that they were adopting budgets that were unfunded? And were they aware that they were contravening or violating national treasury regulations in relation to the budget process? And uh, if they had become aware, they were not aware, now they are aware. What consequence management have they taken to be misled to adopt non cash back budgets, which would create a deficit for municipalities? The other issue, Chair, of concern here, which was raised by the MEC uh, as well as Treasury, relates to the fact that the, these three municipalities, the Khatrong, Mareng, and Pugwan, besides being adopting unfunded budgets, that these municipalities uh, they were expected to spend 40% of their municipal infrastructure grant to effect service delivery and infrastructure development in their own municipalities as of uh, 20 December 2020. But the presentation uh, reflects that these municipalities have been unable to arrive at that 40%. With Mareng, the situation is worse, that this municipality, uh, it has not spent even a cent by December. I get that this, uh, the explanation that there was a dispute uh, between Sandra and the municipality. But the question is, uh, was it over the pipes uh, that they could not spend? So they are spending only on pipes that they could not spend because of the dispute between Sandra and themselves. And, and therefore, how are they moving to sort out that particular challenge that they have been non-standing? It's a low, uh, uh, 4.6. The other one is almost uh, spent far below 40%, at 32 point something. And what measures are being taken in place by both the province, treasury, and the COCTA, as well as the municipalities, in addressing this situation of underspending by these municipalities and therefore creating a potential for residents to embark on protest. Chair, the municipalities also, that these municipalities, they are also being uh, dishonest to their creditors, particularly ESCOM. We're getting a sense that his sole pledge is dead, uh, running at 74 million, that uh, there are no payment plan agreements with ESCOM. And why is it that municipality should be fought, forced by the court of law to pay what is due to their creditors? Why should be that situation that must obtain? And to what extent then is the province and both the treasurer and the, and the, and the co Coxter actually invoking a strong section 154 in supporting these municipalities. I could see that uh, the province in trying to provide this support uh, to ensure that municipalities are spending and also managing uh, project management. It has gone to the extent of uh, establishing this uh, project management unit, which is a cooperation of uh, DPSA and V3. Now, my question, Chair, is uh, when has been this PMU implemented? Uh, because also when you look at it again, uh, the area of, uh, um, that is the terms of reference, 
you find that indeed that this PMU unit that is being outsourced is actually taking over the very basic function of the municipalities. And then what measures are set in place by the province is now instituting this intervention through the PMU that would actually transfer skills and build these necessary skills in the municipalities so that this capability is actually implanted into the municipality to perform instruction. Because my understanding is that this arrangement is not permanent, it's temporary. Then once your DPSA and your V3, they pull out. So the municipality would regress to its earlier situation of not having capabilities. What measures in terms of section 154 is the COGSTA in the province and both nationals providing to build these skills in these municipalities so that they become developmental municipalities on their own? Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, Honorable Mpumza. I shall think of adequately attended to all of you colleagues. Yes, I think so. Can I hand over but, to you? But, but Chair, we still have to come back. I know, I mean for now. I mean for now. Okay, Chair. Isn't that you need to have your lunch as well, then go to the house, then come back in the evening? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, we then need to take responses. Let's do it this way. Let's Salga answer all the questions that are directed to them. You know, let's 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 cocktail province answer all the questions that they are directed to them, then provincial treasury, DCOC if there's any, SALGA if there's any, then I'll, I'll, I'll see how do we progress for the local, for the municipalities. If we are moving, we're still within time, then I'll call municipality one by one. Yes, I, I've been noting your questions, colleagues, so that they respond to your, your questions. Can I, can I hand over now to Coxta? Um, thanks, Honorable Chair. Am I audible from your side? Yes, very loud and clear. Thank you so much. Um, Chair, with respect to the questions by Honorable Brink, um, we, we must indicate that we are not yet at the level of um, the invocation of Section 1391A in any of the municipalities, because we take comfort and we have confidence that our Section 154 um, support to the municipalities with respect to the uh, um, lack of um, implementation of PMS um, is, is actually working. If you look in, the, in our presentation, um, we have identified specific measures that we have um, done with respect to the PMS issues, reminding municipalities about their non-compliance, um, where there is a due, where it is due for them to implement um, certain areas. With respect to the issue of the vacancy of the CFO and the um, MM in Soplaiki, Chair, indeed, we conducted our Section 106 investigation and we presented to council and it has been interdicted by the CFO for implementation by the council. Remember that once it has been done, the council must then determine whether the allegations that are identified in the 106 report are um, of such a nature that they require to charge the MM or not to charge the MM. And then the must, council must take a decision in this regard. We have, as late as um, the end of August or February, received a indication from the um, attorney representing the department that the matter has been postponed to. My apologies. Am I audible now? Am I audible? You too far. 
for now? Yes. You are. Sorry, Chair. You got load shedding on the bathroom, so we were using the HD's laptop. So we will switch it off. Sorry for the echo. So the, the, we now have confirmation that um, the, we will still receive a date for the for the court date for, for us to appear in court with respect to that. And then the issue of the Section 106 investigations, um, the Pokwana one, we have tabled it before the New Municipal Council that has been established, and I've already dealt with the one from, from South Lake. So the, the intention of the PMU is not to take over the responsibility of the engineering services or infrastructure services or technical services from municipalities. As the presentation indicate, by and large, we intend to provide and capacitate both the staff in the department and the staff at the level of the municipalities to ensure that they are able to assist the municipalities with specific areas. The intention is not purely to um, avoid municipalities appointing the necessary senior managers in those municipalities um, and thereby you know, outsourcing the function as the perception might be. Uh, but it is certainly to make sure that there is sufficient capacity in, in this regard. Um, then with respect to the questions from Honorable Kaza, where there is a need for us to um, cover the questions that have been um, covered by one of the members, can, can we accept that the answer that has been given to the question that has already been answered will not go into those specific questions? Chair, the, we've dealt with the issue of the um, uh, what matters in places are sitting in in this regard. Um, the issue of the of the of Sandra in Maharenge, I've, I've now received confirmation from the MM. She will speak when the time comes that Sandra has accepted the request to uh, put the water pipe onto the onto the onto the bridge and underneath the N12. And from her side, she indicates that it will be a substantial amount of it will give a substantial amount of performance with regards to their MIG expenditure because it was specifically identified um, for that area. Um, so then the other question relates to the issue of um, the underspending of MIG grants at Mahare, um, as, as I've indicated, we've spoken about that already. Um, the next question would then be the, from Honorable Drago, we've, resolved, we've, we've answered the question on the MM and the CFO, of um, Mahareng and so of the Katrong and um, Soropleiki. Um, section 106, of one we've spoken about it because it has been interdicted and responded to it. Um, and then, Chair, the issue of the impact, the municipality will speak about it. Um, we will then speak about the issue that relates to, um, what is it now? Um, I think we've covered the of women. Present women. Whoever is whispering here, whispering to the microphone, who can hear you? Yes, my apologies, Chair. I. I just thought I had covered all. Oh, then the vacancy rate in Francis Barton Pokwani. So we can we will indicate that in Pokwani certainly um, the vacancy rate was as a result of the intervention um, and the absence of the municipal council to appoint senior managers. We did not want the administrator to take the responsibility of advertising and appointing senior managers. And then once the new municipal council comes on board they then um, have to accept people that they were not involved with. So as a result, we waited until the municipal council has been declared elected and started um, their office responsibilities. And then the advertisers we already indicated, they will then be the um, correct people to be involved in the process of recruitment. We hope that the vacancy rate of 80% is certainly going to um, shrink and become zero. Um, with the 
The only vacancy that we think is going to be left hanging is that one of the MM, but the rest, we are confident that the council um, should be in a position to deal with them because they are not affected by the issue of the one year after the new municipal council has taken place. At first, as far as chair, the, the challenge has certainly been the, um, the, the package at which the posts are being advertised and comparatively speaking to the current um, cohort of senior managers, who, of managers, middle managers who are in the municipality because the, according to the bargaining council tariffs um, and salary remuneration framework, they earn much more than the, their supervisors or their, their senior managers. And that also um, is deterring the senior, the middle managers to be, to, re, to leave their positions to be appointed as um, as senior managers. Worst of those positions are appointed on a contractual basis. For example, the CFO um, is a permanent employee and our engagements with her to be appointed as CFO is in the issue of um, contractual obligations. And we think um, once this has been resolved, we should be in a position to um, ensure that there is sufficient um, capacity in the municipality. I think that covers the some of the questions that um, relate to us, unless if the head of department has got anything that he, he observed that I did not cover. Thanks. Okay. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Chairperson. Let me, con let me convey my greetings to all honorable members, the executive mayor in attendance and all the mayors respectively. Uh, just to add on what the advocate responded, uh, Chairperson, on the 23% that was raised by honorable speech, not only for Francis, but it covers the whole province. It is, it's a concern for us. Hence, we are encouraging all the municipalities based on their EE plan to ensure that now we really address that particular gap in terms of the 50, 50% in terms of representation. But uh, every time, whenever there are adverts, we encourage, it's a fair discrimination. Even if the advert can go out saying that now women are encouraged, it's a fair discrimination, making sure that now you, you, you bring in a pool of women that can contest for a particular uh, position. But the EE plan is there, but also we have been encouraging them through the mentoring and coaching program that now they have been to intensify that from the human capital management point of view in ensuring that now we we put a few women with, that are talented with a skill in ensuring that now there is a process in, in terms of their career pathing towards a possible management actual uh, position. Regarding the relationship with the NDMC and, and the district disaster management centers, obviously, Chair, we don't have a provincial disaster management center. We work closely with the district municipalities in terms of activation of all the resources because there is that belief that when you talk about a disaster occurrence or incident, it's about money. It's not only about money, it's about activation of all the resources at our disposal in ensuring that now we respond accordingly, especially uh, drawing, a, I mean, plucking a feather from what happened recently with the normal summer rainfall and also the stormy Eloise that affected us also. Uh, we did activate all the resources and also ensuring that now departments and also municipalities reprioritize their, their budget in ensuring that now we are able to address it. Whilst we are, we are waiting for a windfall from National uh, Municipal Disaster Relief Grant, which is not so much also in terms of the fiscals or in terms of the report from National Treasury. So obviously following that, uh, municipalities that have been affected like Joe Murolong, we will be giving them guidelines on how to access that particular funding. There is a framework that has been given. Letters will be going out soon to ensure that now they complete that information as soon as possible based on the assessment report, informed by the business plans also from respective municipalities that have been affected, Chair. Uh, Honorable Mpumza, I think, spoke about, uh, if, if correct, uh, if my memory serves me well, uh, that uh, there are sporadic protests as against the backdrop of service delivery. What we did as provincial administration, we have advised the, the Premier and the Cabinet to establish what is known as a rapid response team towards the protest, because there are sporadic protests here and there. Ultimately, the police end up now engaging with the communities, of which is not of much of a security issue. It's, it's, it's purely a service delivery protest. So the, the team has been activated. We've got a technical team chaired by myself and my colleagues here, made up of different departments, health department, uh, public works, and other relevant departments that will be activated as time goes on. And also, you've got the political structure that, that is chaired by MEC Bentley Fass, including 
other four MEC, MEC Likwene from Health, MEC Forslo from Treasury, and also MEC Fufema Makatong from Public Works, and uh, the Road and I mean, Safety Department also. The aim is to ensure that now we bring together that structure in ensuring that now it, it informs what is known as the Provincial Command Council or the uh, the uh, cabinet. But in, in the same breath, the very same structure will be cascaded down to all the districts where now the district M mayors and MMs will be expected to establish the same structures also in ensuring that now we respond. But primarily in this uh, case, the chairperson of the repertories, I mean, uh, the protest that are sporadic is the, is the role of the World Committee. Where you find there's a dysfunctional World Committee, people will just claim a space that is not theirs. The World Councillor's presence is very much important in this regard. So those World Committee reports that are coming out of the, the, the wards have to find expression within the council so that anything that comes out of those wards, at least the council should be aware because there will be threats, there will be those risks. SAPS will be informing us through the Prof. Joint's uh, intelligence report coming that we are receiving. So we will be engaging with, with those districts and municipalities uh, chairperson. So that's what we have prepared in terms of the rapid response team that has been established politically and administratively. In the others, Chairperson, I think my colleagues from Treasury will add, there is what is known as a debt steering committee chaired by provincial treasurer. At provincial level here, we've got what is known as a memorandum of understanding, which is a shared responsibility between us and Treasury in terms of the MFMA responsibility. But the function of finance, uh, for municipal finance, is purely being handled by Treasury. We deal with governance matters as a department. That's for now, whilst you're waiting for the uh, amendment of the MFMA, but proactively, that's what we have done. But provincial departments that are owing the municipalities, we, we make sure that now, out of what has been uh, ring fence for the equitable share, if there's enough evidence based on the bills that they have received, then Treasury normally assists those municipalities. But from time to time, we are discussing, even at political level, the premier is chairing that particular committee also supported by the MEC, uh, because we are not only about to, talking about ESCOM here in this regard, honorable members, honorable chair, we also talk about the water boards that have been owed. So like now, for example, I've just received a letter from the CEO of CD Bank, who like to get progress in terms of what has been ring fenced, because he knows that now, possibly the equitable share, the last tranche will be delivered soon. So obviously there is that interest, but we are saying, let it not only benefit ESCOM, all the main creditors, whether it's AG, because AG, they are also being owed by municipalities also. We need to make sure that now we bring it to the table as part of our discussion. But the debt steering committee for now is active and is working very hard in ensuring that now municipalities, when they engage with ESCOM, let them not be uh, overburdened by the president to say that now sign here, there is a down payment plan, you must sign. But the cash flow projections of each and every municipality against the backdrop of the pandemic that has hit us very hard, Chair, knowing that now municipalities in the province, majority of them, they are rural, they don't, their budgets are not cash back, as it has been reported by one of the honorable members, I, I think it's honorable Brent and also speaks. But we are trying our little best together with Treasury to assist. Stalga also not been forgotten, Chair. We have spoken about the operation clean audit, chaired by the GG at provincial level. In that operation clean audit, as the MEC reported in his preamble, we are accommodating or we are talking to the five district municipalities. District municipalities, those are low hanging fruit for us to, to take them or migrate them towards what is known as a clean audit or an unqualified audit opinion without matters. Mm -hmm. And also we are looking at the five big towns, five big towns for now, which includes Solplaiki in Kimberley and then the Hasekonyana in the JTG. Uh, the David Kraper in the ZFM, and then the, the Namakwa municipality in, 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 in the Namakwa district, and also the last one, it's M Tanjeni, which is located, which is the capital city of the, uh, the DR. So we are, uh, we are hoping that now those towns, the five towns and the five districts, if we do our work accordingly together with Salga, uh, the OTP and, 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 and ourselves, we will do it collaboratively. So there are meetings that even yesterday there was a meeting that was convened uh, where now we had discussions in terms of the way forward. How do we make sure that now at least let's eat this elephant on a piecemeal approach rather than eating the elephant uh, in too many hands 
will spoil the broth. On that note, Chairperson, that's what I can just talk to in terms of the input that my colleagues have just made. Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, HOD. Can I just quickly make an input on unqualified oh. managers? Who's there? The advocate Manyaneng, Chairperson. Okay, proceed. Chair, mm. um, Honorable Brink and Honorable Ntsaba indicated that yes. what action are we taking with respect to senior managers without highest qualifications? Our records indicate that all senior managers in, in the province and in France's bath district do um, have got um, the appropriate qualifications, experience, and um, the competencies. The only two instances in the district where there was an issue about their qualifications, particularly not qualifications, but competencies, was with the former MM of Pokwane. Um, and the Director of Corporate Services of Francis Bar District, who had conducted their competency assessments with the SAGA um, service providers. We then wrote to both municipalities to request them to do that. But with respect to the MM of Pokwane, she unfortunately um, left the municipality without having completed that. But then the Director of Corporate Services of um, Francis Bar has completed the competency assessment with the COCTA um, provided um, service providers. So as far as we consent in this regard, we, we're quite happy. Um, I do not want to provide the chairperson with what actions have we taken, including yesterday, where there has been non-compliance by senior managers in other municipalities. But certainly, we go there and we instruct them and we advise them what actions to take, and the MEC takes the forefront in this regard. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Can I allow provincial treasury to respond to the questions as asked? Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Good afternoon. And to the members, uh, MECs and mayors and colleagues, I'll be responding to the uh, questions posed to the provincial treasury. The first Busi. one, my name is Busi. The first one, yeah, yes, Busi. Busi, what portfolio do you hold in the department? Uh, Thanks, Mr. Chair. My name is Busim Gaguli. I'm a director responsible for municipal finance and fiscal policy at Treasury. Okay. Proceed. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Can we see you as we, well? My camera is not working. IT has been trying to assist me. It is not working. Uh, maybe next time it will be working. My apologies, Mr. Chair. Okay. Proceed. The, okay. The... the um, the issue of unfunded budget, General Chair, as it was sharply raised by the honourable members, um, it is it, it is an action that we are not promoting as provincial treasury. However, we we engage uh, a lot, honourable chair, with municipalities. We engage a lot with municipalities. We do the assessments, uh, pre-assessments, to ensure that municipalities are in line and they are they are they are they are uh, complying with the regulations and the budget regulations by national treasury and the law uh, as such. So we, we, we then engage municipalities, especially the ones that we feel uh, that their budget are not funded. We, we engage them uh, as vigorously as possible. Um, one of the issues that we advise them to do when the budget is not funding is to make sure, uh, Honorable Chair, that they do uh, really implement the cost containment cost containment measures because as, as correctly was said by one of the honorable members when they were asking questions they were saying that it means the municipality is tabling a deficit and it will not be able to fulfill their responsibilities as expected of them we then um assist municipalities to to, to, to really cut the frills and make sure that uh, the budget is really covering the core functions and activities as expected of municipalities. Um, but we, we want to report, uh, Honorable Chair, that most of the issues that relate to the unfunded budget by municipalities, it is the issue of, of having high creditors. After all the assessment, when we realize that indeed the budget is not going to be funded in the one financial year, but over time, we then assist municipalities to, to make sure that they have the, the creditors plan, the funding plan, and also just to make sure that they, 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 they do adopt the cost containment um, 
plan uh, at the council where they are going to report on a monthly basis as to how are they making sure that the budget is going to be funded over time. And one of the reasons as well, it is really poor collection of revenue by municipalities. That is where uh, you find that um, the cash flow, it is, it, it is a challenge. We, we really engage with municipalities and we share a lot and we train the officials at the municipalities on how to, 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 to assist and how to compile the budget uh, before we can do the assessment. So our understanding is that then the officials at the municipality with the leadership of the administration, the MM, then uh, brief the council on that side on the standing and on, on, on how the, the budget uh, look like. But on the side of Toronto, we really make sure that officials of municipalities are assisted, are trained, and are, are they taken through in the, in the funding assessment tools that are uh, expected of them uh, by, by, by us, the National Treasury. In respect to the implementation of the FRPs, yes, as reported by the uh, HOT presenting, uh, um, the municipalities are finding it hard to implement the financial recovery plans, um, Honorable Chair. Uh, we have noted that um, in, in the reports, uh, the monthly reports and quarterly reports that they submit to us, we have noted the slow uh, to non implementation. So we review the reports submitted to us by municipalities and we advise on what actions they must take, they must take in order to make sure that um, they, they, they do um, what activities they're supposed to do in order to implement the financial recovery plans. Because it is our understanding that they, they, there was a need for each municipality, uh, those that are in possession of FRPs, there was a need as to why uh, they were supposed to have a financial recovery plan. It's just not a document that must be kept in the shelves. Uh, so we are really uh, finding it hard. And reasons, uh, I'm sure municipalities, maybe they will speak to those. The reasons I cited is the issue of not having finances um, because some of the activities uh, in the FRP, they really need, for instance, they want um, that they implement them the smart meters and all that. But our, 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 our advice is always that municipalities must implement their credit control to the latter so that they can get revenue and they get monies from those uh, that owe them so that they can have the cash flow to be able to implement uh, the activities in the FRP. I'm now moving towards the issue of the less to understanding in terms of the capital um, budget. Honorable Chair, we can report comfortably that as provincial treasury, we do the assessment of uh, and analysis of the spending. Uh, after we do that, we then communicate with municipalities, indicating what are what are the risks in, in in the finances as we see them, and also we recommend to them what is it that they must do. And I can cite one of the things that is a challenge, uh, Honorable Chair, is municipalities tend to take long to implement their credit control. When ESCOM at some time is, 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 is threatening to disconnect, then we'll see that now there's a, there's a move, there's a change. They are now starting to switch off um, the, the, the data and all that. So we want, we encourage municipalities to do that on a regular basis because their policies allows them to do that as, as adopted by the council. So we, we, we then write a non-compliance letters to the municipalities to inform them that we have noted with concern that the less spending, but what, 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 what we then do, we don't end uh, only in sending the non-compliance letters. We then train the municipalities in terms of the bid committees, what is expected and in all the different committees in, 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 on supply chain, just to make sure that they are trained enough uh, to make sure that they take decisions and they move with all the supply chain management processes. And, and, and as correctly said by my colleagues and previously that indeed uh, conditional grants, are, 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 are especially the MIG, is the one that gets to not to be spent. So we, 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 we on a continuous basis, train municipalities on bid committees and, and, and explain to them what is it that is expected um, so that they, they, they spend. Um, apart from that, we then, um, National Treasury then will, when the municipalities are not spending, honorable chair, the, the, the understanding is if the, the, the monies of the conditional grant is not spent by the municipality, the understanding is that we need to see that money in the bank account of the municipality or invested somewhere. We need to see that. The minute we get the statements and the financials of the municipality and we, we, we discover that the monies and the grants are not cash begged, that's why we draw the conclusion that indeed it means the money that were meant for um, a certain conditional grant has been used for other purposes other than the one of the grant. Then National Treasurer will then issue letters to the municipality informing them of intention 
to offset the, uh, the, the, the equitable shares of the municipality. That is a problem and it is one of the punitive measures that no one is happy about. However, municipalities need to be accountable enough to spend the grants, monies that they receive from national, as you all are aware that there is a need in the ground. Our, our communities do need the infrastructure. So if the municipalities are using monies for other purposes other than internet for, then they're supposed to um, deposit the monies back to the National Revenue Fund. But if the, the grants are not cash back, uh, it gets to be uh, offset with the next tranche. And as we know that, for instance, um, if a municipality doesn't uh, spend an amount of 8 million, National Treasury will then offset the new tranche of the grant. And that already cripples the activities and the, the, the deliverables that are supposed to, 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 to be done by the municipality with the new uh, equitable share. So we always uh, encourage honorable chair that municipalities must spend the monies. If a municipality even spend more than what was allocated in the grant by, 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 by national, they even get more, they even qualify to get more money in the same financially. So it has been our song that municipalities must spend and where possible, we always, um, support them, train them on the processes and procedures. So what is it that they must do? Um, on the matter of um, the CFO, there was a question that what did we do in terms of uh, seconding the CFO? I think in Dihatlong. Honorable Chair, we, the, the Dihatlong municipality appointed an acting CFO after the CFO um, was, was placed on those leave. They, they appointed an acting CFO. So our role as provincial treasurer is to come in and support whoever that the, 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 the council found fit to, to act as a CFO. So we support, we provide training, and we really provide head-holding and hands-on support to the official that is, has been appointed by the council. We've been doing that. We've been supporting Chris uh, in Tihatlong on all matters of finances, uh, honorable chair. And we, we, we just to confirm also one of the things that we are assisting them more now um, is the issue of ensuring that municipalities are having cost reflective tariffs. One of the challenges that you find municipalities finding difficult in terms of revenue collection and all that, they are, their tariffs are not cost, re cost reflective in the sense that they are selling electricity at a loss. You find that they are buying electricity for one rand, but they will sell it by 60, 60 cents. So already when they open the doors, already they're opening the doors at a loss. So we are, we are training the municipalities and assisting them to have the cost reflective tariff to say that they must, uh, they must make sure that their tariffs, they are charging really on, 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 on what is expected to them, at least if they can break even, if not get any money. But uh, we, we discourage the issues the issues of, of, of deficit. Uh, I think I've covered all the questions of Treasury. I think you should. Thank you. Thank you, Wussi. Can we allow Sanka to respond if there were issues directed to them? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Councilman Churi speaking. Chairperson, nothing was directed to us specifically, um, but Salga being part of the remedial processes um, of, of the Department of Cocta um, and also um, Treasury. Um, I think we, we are covered and we, we are clear. Also, the issues that were, were raised by committee members um, also spoke to the issues that Salga raised. So from our side, Chair, we, we, we are okay with um, the responses made by the department on issues, but nothing was directed to us specifically. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Then I would like to municipalities, it's got to, it's got to, to one. We should break by one. Can I allow the Hato local municipalities to attempt to respond to the question? I see. Sorry, Plucky, you've got a lot of issues, Councillor Mabi. No, thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much, Honorable Chairperson, the MEC, and all colleagues present here. My team will follow on the other technical aspects that were raised. I'll so we're, we're, raise, we're dealing uh, with some like, ne? Yes, some like. Yes. Okay. Sure. Thank okay. you. Thank you, 
Honorable Chairperson and the members of the Portfolio Committee, the MEC present, all HUDs, all councillors present, including the Mayoral Committee of Salt Lake. I'll just reflect on two, three issues, and then the team will reflect on the others. Uh, the first one is to uh, admit the concerns raised that as a secondary city, Salt Lake performance is not as it is expected to. As well, we admit we are going through serious financial Can we hear the mayor? Colleagues? No chair. No chair. No chair. I think you must switch off the camera and chip us. Wait, the mayor. In in that absence, can we take the cattle? Thank you, Chair. Mm. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. Mm. Uh, my name is Timaka Chambizeni, the mayor of the Kato municipality. Can we see you, Major? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chair. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chair. Honorable Mayor Faith. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Uh, Chair, we know the question on unfunded budget. We have adopted the cost containment plan to reduce cost and pay creditors. We have also ab adopted the revenue enhancements plan. We are also implementing the financial recovery plan to ensure our budget is fully funded. Chair, for the rest of the questions, I will hand over to the Municipal man acting municipal manager and the CFO to answer other questions. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Can we first with the CFO? Then the MM will come after the CFO. CFO. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Are you Christian? Is it is Christian your name? That that is correct, Chairperson. Okay. Uh, th thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, I first wish to start by saying that we do acknowledge some of the items that were raised by the members. And most importantly, I wish to most thank Coxta, Salga, Provincial Tre Treasury, particularly also the Francis Bart for the support that they have given us um, during this particular time. Um, as the Katwe municipality, we could not have moved from a disclaimer to a qualification if it was not their support. So I wish to thank them for the support that they have given us. Chair, just to answer part of the questions that were proposed or that were raised. Number one, the issue of why did we then remain stagnant on the issue of misstatements? We've managed to, in terms of the audit action plan that was drafted by the municipality, um, we've managed to delete or to, to erase most of the misstatements that were identified by the AG um, in our disclaimer, and, and they were erased. We're left only with new findings in terms of the misstatements that related to areas where uh, there were minor items where we did not have either the meters were broken for water or for electricity, which later then subsequently resulted in certain misstatements in terms of revenue related items. Uh, it is one of the questions that were posed by the Honorable Priti. Uh, with regard to SCM and, 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 and or transgression of SCM and tax matters, we also saw Chairperson that there were deficiency in our SCM organogram. And we then recently advertised and then uh, we then filled that particular position with the head of SCM to assist and to beef up the SEM position. So currently there is a warm body there in SEM. And we, in terms of other SEM transgressional matters, 
those particular matters were also taken to MPEC for MPEC to deliberate and then they have to investigate and then thereafter those particular matters to be taken to council for council also to deliberate and then um, if there are investigation or those that must be charged and then we would then allow those particular process to be to be um, for those particular process to unfold. Chair, and then the issue of MPEC uh, with regard to unauthorized expenditure, our MPEC does meet Chairperson. Uh, in the last meeting that the MPEC did set upon, they did set upon issues of irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. And there are certain fruitless and fruitless and wasteful expenditure that MPEC has recommended to council, uh, including also unauthorized for council to write off. I think that they are still in the process of looking at irregular expenditure. I'm quite certain that very soon a, another report will be produced by MPEC. Um, through the support of BUSI in provincial treasure, they've also assisted us in terms of ensuring that we attend to matters of UIF properly and regularly. So I'm happy that uh, the support I'm, I'm getting from provincial treasure has been quite, quite welcomed and quite supportive from them in terms of assisting us. Performance agreements, all of them were signed by all senior managers. I think the MM will allude to that, but I remember very well. They were signed and they were given to Coxter. Um, Chair, in terms of the, 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 the revenue, that we are not happy in terms of the pace that we are getting our revenue. Yes, COVID-19 has hit most of us quite hard um, in terms of people not paying and others losing their jobs um, as we are one of the rural municipalities. We do have a revenue enhancement plan that addresses issues of collection, that addresses issues of uh, fixing and also installing new meters, that addresses issues of responding quickly to consumers' queries, that also speed up the issues of collecting historical debt and also the current debt. Um, we are getting support in terms of debt that belongs to the departments, uh, provincial treasury tends to invite us to that and to submit those that owe us money. We are currently in engagement with public works in terms of reconciling their debt so that they can also pay us what is due to the municipality. So the revenue announcement plan is there. We are doing, there is also an action plan around the revenue announcement. We, we are hopeful that at, since the, the COVID, since the regulation or the, since we are now at level number one, that things will start picking up. Uh, we want to be at the desired level um, as per the circular that was released by provincial by national treasury. Um, but I take it that through step by step, we will get there as an institution. Chair, I believe that the, the I'm, I'm going to pause there and, and allow the, the municipal managers then, then to take us through with regard to other items that I might have missed. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, CFO. MM, the turn is yours now. Okay, thank you, Chair. I think the CFO has covered um, almost everything except for the issue of MIG. Uh, I think everybody knows that you are under the financial recovery plan. And as part of our plan, we are supposed to make sure that our organizational structure supports also the functions. Is your of the camera meeting. not working as well, MM? It is working. Let's see you. We want to see you. Okay, you can see me now. Just dark where you are. You are it's just dark where you are. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so we had to ensure that in terms of the organizational structure, we review it and, and ensure that we have position in the structure, like your civil technician and the SCM. So we have appointed a civil technician who's going to assist the municipality also in submission of the business plan. And I think that you will see an improvement in that particular field. And also in terms of SCM, I think that you can see that in terms of irregular expenditure, we were struggling. So we have actually uh, almost complete, uh, completed appointing a service provider for the project that have been actually approved by MIG. So I think that is the only issue that the CFO has missed. All the other issues, he has covered them exceptionally well. Thank you, Chair. 
Okay. Any follow up on the Kajong? Colleagues? Any follow up on the Kajong? Uh, can, can the MM of the Katlum mute your microphone and the executive mayor of Son Blacky mute off their microphone for now? It's almost four minutes to one. We need to break to go to lunch before going to the house. Then, uh, then we'll meet at 19 hours. Let me thank the MEC. Thus, we've just left the meeting together with all of you. I just believe that we'll be again full house when we reconvene at 19 hours. A new link will be sent to all of you. Let's adjourn this meeting until we meet at 19 hours. Thank you. Enjoy your lunch. Some of us who are going to go to the house Let's go there. The other colleagues will be running some errands until we meet at 19 hours. It gives Thank the one that. Thank so you. at least before you go, Ma, at least then you have the questions. I think if you prepare thoroughly, then make us stay here until AM because with other municipalities, we've knocked beyond AM 1, 2. So I believe the colleagues from the remaining municipalities will do us that favor. You have ample time to look at your answers and responses and the possible follow-ups that might come so that uh, we deal with that. So that when we come back at least, I'll be happy if we knock off before nine. <laughs> Thank you, colleagues. <laughs>